Did that happen? Yes. That's bull. Oh, Do you remember? Good. Just, shh, just a second. I can't wash your mouth out with soap, sir, but I certainly can take care of it financially. You owe her three thousand six hundred ninety-two dollars and sixty-one cents. That's the most expensive curse word you're ever going to say. That's all. Out. You are about to enter the courtroom of Judge Judith Scheinlin. The people are real. The cases are real. The rulings are final. This is her courtroom. This is Judge Judy. Bodies on Siebertson versus Lucinski. Step forward, please. 20-year-old Emily Siebertson says her ex-boyfriend, 26-year-old Lance Lanzinski, owes her money he borrowed before they broke up. Lance says the money was a gift. Order, all rise. Quiet in the courtroom, please. All rise. Now, this is case number 379 on the calendar in the matter of Sievertson versus Lucinski. Parties have been sworn in, Judge. You may be seated, sir. Ma'am, have a seat. Why would you give him your credit card? I didn't give him my credit card. I, um, I purchased things for him on my credit card because we were in a relationship for a long time, and he said that he was going to pay me back. Did you live together? No. So you dated? Mm-hmm. Over what period of time? About eight months. And tell me about the first time that you started putting things on your credit card. Um, I guess we went to the mall, and um, he wanted to get, I think it was um, Sony PlayStation was the first thing that I got him. What's a Sony PlayStation? It's a video game system. Um, and I got that for him, because he said he really wanted it. And he said you know, he couldn't come up with all the money at one time. So if I put it on my credit card, he could come up with the monthly payments. Mr. Lanzinski, does that sound familiar to you? No, Your Honor. You remember this video game? I never asked for anything. They were gifts. Tell me about being at the mall, sir. I went to the mall. She surprised me, talking about she wasn't going to tell me anything what we were going to do at the mall. But, you know, she had all that inside of her, what she wanted to, you know, buy me. So we went out. She bought me a Sony PlayStation. She took it in her responsibility to where she wanted to go out, you know, I mean, they're gifts. I didn't ask her to buy them. She knew that I wanted them. I just asked you for, okay. about one thing, sir, and you're going to give me a whole song and dance. You Sorry ever hear the that, expression, me think the gentleman protests too much? <clears throat> Did you ever hear that? <clears throat> Charles Schultz didn't say that. <laughs> what next, madam? The car. My car. Um, I was out of town on a business trip with my father, and my car was parked at his house. And I did mention that I did want to sell my car, but I needed to get at least $900 for it because I still owed that money on it. So he, I guess someone was driving by his house and said that they wanted to buy it. And so Lance sold the car to this guy that I didn't even know for, he said $1,000. So I said, okay, that's fine. You know, I'll do everything when I get back. So, so what happened? nothing happened with that. <laughs> I kept calling him and the guy that bought the car changed. How could he buy a car without you signing that, all these certificates? <laughs> How could somebody buy a car without you signing over the certificate of title? I don't know. Where's the certificate of title for your car? It wasn't in my name because I, I was going to get the title when I finished paying it off. So I have... Whose name was it in? In um, the person I bought it from, Dolores. So the car wasn't in your name? Right, because I needed to finish paying it off. How did you sell a car that belonged to Dolores? Well, if I can say one thing... She... No, 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 no. Answer my question. How did I sell a How car? How do you sell a car to somebody that oh, no, That's a good question. That's something that, I, Your Honor, I haven't figured out for the last four months. You know, the guy wanted to buy the car. He came to look at the car. I got a hold of her. She wanted to sell the car. But in, and the guy was supposed to give me $600, mm -hmm. which I couldn't get $600 for the car. So you know, the car had so many problems, you know, even though... I mean, I did something... How do you sell a car without a certificate of title? You mean you, you just, he just gave you money and he took the car? How's he going to register a car without a certificate of title? I don't know. That's paperwork is in the car, Your Honor. It has to be signed, sir. Yeah, I know, Your Honor. Madam, go to the police. I, I'm in the process of doing that. Go to the police. Don't tell me about this car. I think you two people are both whacked up. <laughs> I really do. I <laughs> suggest to me that you both... A little off. You go to the police, and you have the police get the car back. Did you get any money for it? Didn't you get any money for the car? 
What word didn't you understand, sir? Did yeah, I got you money, and I, money play, I, I got money from, from the guy that bought the car, and I handed her $400. That's the only amount that he gave me that was affordable for him, even though he had to pay $600, which he was supposed to pay $200 more. And next thing you know, the car's in his name. And I'm not God. I don't know how he did that. Did he give you I don't any have money? a crystal ball. A did he give you any money? He gave me $400. Right. And then I gave it back to him. What? Then Wait. I let him borrow it. <laughs> borrow it? When? When did you let him borrow it? Um, I'm not sure. It was for car payments and groceries and stuff that he wanted because he said he was going to pay me back. You know, I, I admit that I was an idiot. And, um... And I know this. <laughs> Judge Judy continues in a moment. You would throw temper tantrums in the mall, and you, I was scared of you, so I bought those things for you. Oh, different kids. story. And later today... It's not her fault that your father violated his parole and served six months. She doesn't have to support you, sir. She's got enough trouble of her own. It. Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. 20-year-old Emily Siebertson says her ex-boyfriend, 26-year-old Lance Lanzinski, owes her money he borrowed before they broke up. Lance says the money was a gift. So far, well, the only thing that you told me you bought for him, madam, that he said he would repay was this Nintendo Video. game or whatever else it is. Yeah. What and else did you buy? games, a shaver, clothes, shoes, and money for the car payment, groceries, and... For him? Yeah. He said he didn't have any money, so I... You know, I was helping him out because we were in a relationship. I trusted him. I cared about him. Mm -hmm. I mean, Your Honor, we were in a relationship. We loved each other. We cared about each other. I didn't love her. Where she didn't, she didn't think inside I loved her the way that I should have loved her. She loved me more. She gave way too much in a relationship. She gave way too fast. You know, I haven't got stuff like that since I was a little kid. My mom bringing me stuff like that. That's you know, because now I'm if here. I didn't get you things, you would throw a temper tra tantrum and you, you would either That's beat incorrect. me up or you left me stranded at the mall if I didn't buy you those boots. No, you know, I don't think so. you would throw temper tantrums in the mall and you, I was scared of you, so I bought those things for you. Oh, different kids. story. Listen to me, madam. It's, be, it's coming clear to me. He used you. I know. He used you. But this is a court. In a court, there has to be a contract. Mm -hmm. Because you're, what you're really suing for is a breach of contract, <clears throat> that you had an oral contract with him, that you would allow him to make certain purchases on your credit card, and he mm -hmm. would pay the bills. Right. And he never made a payment on your credit he, card. Yes, he did. He did? Yes, he oh, total. He sh show me where he made a payment on your credit card. I made quite a few of them, to be honest with you. You I, did? And it's just something that I didn't have to do, it's just... Oh, you know? now it's coming nice. This is easier because then I could do the right thing, even though it, I thought I mean, that it I wasn't money able that to. I owed, you know? It was $75 to go get a, like, a concert ticket, the Pink Floyd concert. They wanted oh, to Oh, good. Oh, right. And you did make certain payments, sir. It wasn't even payments. It's something that I gave. That's what my heart wanted to do. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's only money. It's only a piece of paper. How much does he still owe on the credit cards? Um, it's, he paid three hundred. What was the? It was thirty nine hundred. Thirty nine ninety two sixty one minus three hundred, I guess. Now that includes fifteen hundred dollars over fifteen hundred in ATM cash advances to him. Right. What was that for? For when um, he needed tires for his car, and I did give him my ATM oh, card. Oh, and oh, oh, he, uh, oh, oh, oh. Just a sec. I have a hook to hang my robe on because he did make certain payments which acknowledges <laughs> the fact that they were loans. Right. Okay. So I have... Because he used you. There's no question about that. However, I wouldn't say anything to me if I were you, sir. <laughs> you have to prove to me that there was an understanding, clear contract when he said to you, I'm taking out this money and I will pay you back. Did that happen? Yes. That was $1,573.
I can't wash your mouth out with soap, sir, but I certainly can take care of it financially. You owe her $3,692.61. That's the most expensive curse word you're ever going to say. That's all. Out. Step out. <laughs> back door to your right. I fell for his scam. He's been doing it a long, lot more longer than I have. And, you know, I, I, I care for him. I care for the, the family, you know, and I had better. a good time with no, you guys. Well, it wasn't but... a scam. The versus Woodbridge. Step forward. 21-year-old student Matthew Mazur says his father's former live-in girlfriend, Pamela Woodbridge, illegally evicted him after his father went to jail. How old are you, Mr. Mazur? 21. When did you turn 21? April, April 30th. Now, in May of this past year, you were living with the defendant, correct? correct? And you were living there with your father. Yes. And your father and the defendant were engaged to be married or living together. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. What were you doing with yourself in May, sir? Uh, I was beginning to go to college at that time. What do you mean, beginning to go to college? Who begins to go to college in May? No, I was going to go through summer courses. That starts in June or July. Well, registration's in May, though. That's not a major effort, sir. That's not doing much, going to register for school. It's not necessarily a full-time job. What were you doing with yourself in May? Nothing at that time. What were you doing in April? Uh, well, nothing at that time either, ma'am. Well, let's try March. Uh, <laughs> what, are you, what were you doing with yourself in March? Nothing, preparing to go to school. I was... <sighs> you mean getting into the thinking mode? <laughs> Is that what you're trying to tell me, Mr. Mazur? All right. All this has a purpose, sir. You're suing the defendant because in May, according to both of you, your father got arrested, taken off to jail, leaving you living with a perfect stranger. Right? No, we, we lived together for eight months prior to that. Eight we were, months, a lifetime. We were pretty close. Well, they went out for two years before that. But you were living with them for eight months. Yeah. And your father was, I assume, contributing to the household. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. It's a two-bedroom yes. apartment. Yes, yes. So after your father was arrested, you were still living there. You are suing her for $4,000. You say she illegally evicted you from the apartment, and she kept your furniture that you bought. That's correct. It was bought for me by my father. It was bought for you. You yes. better get before you go to college. You better s brush up on your English. It's bought for you by your father. Now, what did you expect her to do, Mr. Mazur, when the person who was contributing to half the rent, I assume, half the utilities, is hauled off to jail, leaving her with a total biological stranger to support? Because you're on your way preparing yourself for college. What did you expect her to do? Judge Judy continues in a moment. I got steroid psychosis because they tried to put me in remission. So I went crazy and David kind of came into my life and I didn't know he was a, a con artist. Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. Matthew Mazur claims his father's former live-in girlfriend, Pamela Woodbridge, illegally evicted him. Who are you? I'm his father. Terrific. <laughs> Step up here. Mr. Mazur, how did you expect this lady to take care of business? When you I was taken into custody by the parole department uh, based on some facts that the sheriff's department gave them, which so to date they parole. never even filed on. So you were taken into custody on parole violation? Right. Did you spend any time in jail, sir? Yes, I did. How much time? Six months. What arrangements did you make with the defendant to support the household while you were in jail? None. It was paid for through the first of the following month, and I didn't anticipate staying in jail very long. Okay. So she told you that you had to find another place to live because she needed a roommate who could afford to pay at least half the rent. That's correct. Sounds right to me. But he was on the lease. Who put your name on the lease? Uh, she did. Did you put his name on the lease? He's uh, listed on the lease as a minor. Let me ask you this question. How long were you living in this apartment? I moved in on November 10th of 1996. And when did he move in? He moved in. I couldn't At put him on the time. lease. Right. Shh. At, At the, the same, same time. time. But I couldn't put him on the lease because David has been to prison two or three times for credit card fraud. 
And so his credit is ruined. Now, this young man moved in with you later. No, no he time. did move in at the same time. As so well. you all moved into this apartment together? Right. Okay. Mr. Mazur, I assume you moved into this apartment and your arrangement was, because you told me that you did, that you were going to pay the expenses on the apartment. You paid the rent, you paid the utilities, correct? Right? Correct. That was your arrangement with this lady. Where had you lived before? I had a house in Dana Point, and I, uh, in 1995, I got multiple sclerosis, and my husband of 11 years divorced me. Um, and anyway, to make a long story short, I got steroid psychosis because they tried to put me in remission. So I went crazy, and David kind of came into my life, and I didn't know he was a, a con artist. He has scammed me out of $180,000. And I have my credit report right here to show. The question that I'm asking you, and that's all very interesting, <laughs> is when you moved into this apartment, I assume your arrangement was, because you did it for some six months, that you would pay the bill, get hauled off to jail for six months, leaving her with the apartment. And Nobody would get hauled off to jail for six months, leaving her with the apartment. And Nobody had, to pay the rent. I had no, and no, your that's son. where you're wrong. I had $5,000 in cash with me at the time I was arrested. So what did you do with it? Which was to pay her attorney to fight for the custody of her children. <laughs> that money so was taken, and I have this document, was taken in by the Department of Corrections and mailed to me the following day to the jail. For what purpose, I don't know. But I did have... Should, that, did you get $5,000 from him? No, Just, his parole officer told me that David did have, I think she said $4,000, and she asked him, did he want her to give it to me? And he said, no. Just a minute. Do you have any proof to show me, Mr. Mazur, that you provided the defendant with $5,000 in order to cover the expenses of this apartment while you were away? I, yes, Don't show me a lot of papers there. Show me where you turned over the money to the defendant to cover the expenses of the apartment. The apartment part was, two, uh, here it is right here, $2,993. Let me see it. And the sheriff's department kept it. They said they could not give it to her because they were Just a minute. So me. the answer is she didn't get it. Yes. So what are you showing me this baloney for? She didn't get it. So what you're telling me is I should take your good intentions into consideration. No, she rented the... But what? The rent, was, the rent was paid to the end of the following month. All right. She doesn't have to keep your son there not working. Now, furniture. You had furniture? Well, David had gone out and bought a futon for Matthew. On okay. my credit card, well, it, it may have been card. a joint credit card. Right. <laughs> David was doing credit card roulette, basically. Judge Judy continues in a moment. He went out and bought a futon. Right. Is that the only piece of furniture that was bought specifically for Mr. Mazur Jr.? Yes. Okay. Now, there are other items. What other items, sir, do you say were bought by your father for you? Not really any other furniture, just a couple tables and... Tables? Just, what yeah, tables? Yeah, just like end tables. And end tables? What end tables? Talk to me. His um, mother took... Shh, shh. What just, end tables? They're just glass end tables, brass... That your father bought for his 20-year-old son? No, those were mine when I brought them there. Okay, so where are they? His mother took them. She the... came and picked up his things. Except the futon. Exactly. Which you paid uh, which for. Which I sold. Which because... you sold. Right. And which was on your credit card. Yes, ma'am. Or on a joint credit card. Right. Which he wasn't paying from jail. Right. Good. Excuse me, the insurance was paying for it. When she came down with MS, the insurance picked up all the bills. She virtually what? had no bills, with the exception of the rent. So, just a minute. Why no. should she have any bills? That wasn't your arrangement. Mr. Mazur. But there's an eviction process you go through in the state of California. You just don't throw somebody out and lock them out. Where's his mother? My mother, I can't live with her. She has cats, and I'm fatally allergic to them. So I can't live with my mother. Your mother has cats, sir. Yeah. I have no more time. This lawsuit is nonsense. The case is dismissed. Who are you? I was his girlfriend at the time, and he did have a job when he moved there. I was invited by them to go to school. That's why I went there. And they didn't have the money at the time to pay for me to go to Mr. school. Mr. Mazur, it's not her fault that your father violated his parole and served six months. She doesn't have to support you, sir. She's got enough trouble I of her own. That. Goodbye. Bodies are excused. You may step out. 
Judge Judy continues in a moment. Out the back door to your and right. on the next Judge Judy. It was a cold thing what she did to me. She threw me on the streets knowing I had no place to go. I mean, it was it, it was a really hard thing for me to deal with. I had to come up with nothing. I mean, I had half my clothes, nothing else. That's all I had when she threw me on the streets. I had to rent that room out because it's called survival. Somebody says, hold it. You move it, I'll shoot. Blood was spilled the night a bail bondsman caught up with the suspect who didn't pay him back. We rolled to the ground. As we were rolling, I felt his hand go for my gun. This man's going for his gun like he's some super cop or something. You've been in jail before. You've been arrested before. You've had bond posted before. You know the drill. You are about to enter the courtroom of Judge Judith Scheinlin. The people are real. The cases are real. The rulings are final. This is her courtroom. This is Judge Judy. Parties on Wizenden versus Concepcion. Step forward, please. Bail bondsman Gene Wizenden claims Frank and Eleanor Concepcion owe him bail money and that Frank bit his finger when he tried to arrest him. Order, all rise. Quiet the courtroom, please. Judge, this is number 277 on the calendar in the matter of Wizenden versus Concepcion. Parties have been sworn in, Judge. You may be seated. Have a seat, ma'am. Mr. Wizenden, you are a bail bondsman. Yes, ma'am. This lady came to you because her husband, I suppose that's you. Yes. Correct? Was arrested? She actually, Maria is my sub-agent who actually wrote the bond. You came to her? Mm-hmm. Well, I called her. Because your husband was in jail. Mm -hmm. What was he arrested for? For possession of a um, stolen property. Possession of stolen property is what mm -hmm. he was arrested for. He was being held on how much bail? Twenty-five. $25,000. $25, $25, mm -hmm. yeah. There's one other charge there, Your Honor. It was PC 273.5, which is domestic violence. Okay. So possession of stolen property and beating up his wife. Actually, I believe it was his sister-in-law. Sister-in-law. Uh -huh. Because that's heavy bail, $25,000. Anyway, you charge 10%. That is correct. And you agreed to post the bail for him. Yes, ma'am. So he could get out of jail, right? Right. That was a nice thing for them to do. That's his job. Your fee for, yeah, that's his job. For which he gets what? For which he gets 10%. Paid. Right. He's paid. And at the time your wife came in, all she had was... $1,300. But they agreed to go ahead and post the bail anyway. Right. Correct. And there was an agreement. And what was the agreement about the rest of the bail, sir? It was a signed promissory note uh, to have the remaining balance of $1,200, uh, excuse me, $1,300 paid in full by May 2nd. And how many days after that? That was actually four days after the bond was posted, and that was a date that was agreed upon by Maria, the agent writing the bail, and, and uh, Eleanor. May I see it, please? So, Ms. Concepcion, you signed this promissory note to come in four days later and post mm -hmm. the rest of the bail. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. Did you? I tried. That I didn't. No. I you didn't? didn't? No. And you, sir, got out of jail? Yes. Did you go in and post the money? No, I didn't. I, um, I told her, I know, directly I told her, I said, there's no possible way that I'm going to be able to have that money for you. Now, um, there, is, is there a way that we can make arrangements for the balance? Uh, payments such as, you know, $200 a month. Just a second. These aren't your relatives. They're in business. But, Your Honor, she told me that when I, if I had any problems making the um, payments, I, we, she could make arrangements. Correct. But um, when I had also spoken to her and I, we did the promissory note, I told her to tell me 
the date that she can come up with this money. So I gave her an option to either pay it off in full or do payments. And she told me that she could come up with the money by May 2nd, which was a couple days later. Okay. Now listen. The most important thing for you was to get your husband out of jail. Yes. You signed this piece of paper that promised that you would make the payment to the bail bondsman who stands to lose all the money, right? Yes, ma'am. Not just this little bit of money, but $25,000. That is correct. Because you are ensuring that he's going to show up and do the right thing. Yes, ma'am. That's correct. That's his business. Okay. So you got what you needed momentarily, which was to get out of jail. You made, you promised whatever you had to promise, and then you didn't pay it. How many times have you been arrested? Can't try to count on one hand. No. How I many times? I have been arrested that many times. So you know the drill? Not really. Are you sure you do? How old are you? 37. You've been arrested more than three times, sir? Make sure you tell me the truth. Um, actually about three times. Yeah, the money issue was actually secondary on... Uh, oh, I know. Okay. Because your lawsuit says that he didn't show up. To sign, the, to sign the paperwork, that is correct. To sign the paperwork, and he was supposed to. There's also another... That's this other form. Can I see that, please? His wife signed. Sorry, no, Now, you signed this paper agreeing that you would produce your husband in their office within 48 hours of his release mm -hmm. to sign the remainder of the paperwork. Right? Right. But she told me, because I didn't have the money, she told me not to go in. Did you ever tell her not to come in? No. Baloney! <sighs> Baloney! She never told you not to bring him in to sign the rest of the paperwork? Uh, paperwork is what, what he has to have. When I spoke to her, why wouldn't she, do, wouldn't she tell me this? She told me she straight Just a second, sir. Were you told by your wife that you had to go in within two days to sign some paperwork? No. Baloney. Baloney. You know, I don't think there's so. a certain common sense, sir. You've been in jail before, you've been arrested before, you've had bond posted before. You know the drill. She told me about taking a picture, yes, okay. Right. But like I said, I Just have a spoke second. to this woman yes. personally. Your wife told you that you had to go in and sign some paperwork and have your picture taken. So the answer is yes. Right? Picture taken, yes. Did you go? Um, did we don't know. No, because we didn't have the money. This says when you're released within 48 hours, you have to come to his office. Is that what it says? Correct. It is in English. Clear as a bell. So don't tell me I about going to court that, no, the next day. I understand day. that, but she told us not to come in because we we, there was we a lot making of a trip for nothing. Verbally. I would call her and she would tell me she would come in the next day. There was no one. She never ever came in. I kept calling, telling me that her her check or whatever for, for forever which reasons she didn't have the money. And I told him, I told her, okay, if you don't have the money, come in and we can make payment you arrangements. You told me you were going to arrest me. Come in. Hey, if he. If the paper on the agreement said, on that agreement that we just handed to you, said if he didn't come in within 48 hours, then we could arrest him. Judge Judy continues in a moment. He's trying to put his finger in my eyes. Instinct, I just, I bite on that finger. Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. Bail bondsman Gene Wizen says Frank Concepcion owes him bail money. When Gene went to collect, Frank says there was an altercation over a gun. Tell me what happened when you went to arrest okay, him. Here we go. We had a, there were two times. The first night was on a Wednesday, the uh, uh, 14th, I believe. I went to the mother-in-law's house, which was listed as, as his res, uh, residential address. I went there. I saw Eleanor and I saw his mother-in-law and a number of other people there. I went through the house. He wasn't there. Gave Eleanor and her mother my business cards with instructions to have Frank call me when he came back in. You're a liar, man. Shh. Hey, I want you to be quiet, sir. Don't talk to him. You're going to have a chance to speak. How much after you posted the bail for him did you go to effectuate the arrest? Um, about two and a half weeks, almost three weeks. Okay. And in that two and a half or three weeks' time, had he come in to make any payment whatsoever? No, ma'am. As a matter of fact... Had his wife 
come in to make any payment whatsoever? No, ma'am. Okay. So you went to arrest him. And tell me what happened when you got there. I uh, got to the house. We were watching the house. Maria was the driver. I was, I was going to affect the arrest. Um, I had Maria move the car. I was standing in the shadow next to the side of the house when um, Maria pulled to the light to square the block and come back in a different location. Uh, Frank's, as I find out later, it was Frank's younger brother comes out, see her, sees her pull away, um, yells something out. Frank goes running across the street, out to the front door, across the street to his parked car. That is correct. I yelled out his name. I yelled his name again and ordered, ordered him to stop. He turned around, looked over his shoulder at me, ran back towards the house. Um, I stopped him in the driveway, um, side of the house on the side driveway. Uh, we rolled to the ground. Um, as we were rolling, I felt his hand go for my gun. I clamped his, his hand. At that point, I basically gave up on the encounter. My whole goal, my whole purpose in life at that point was to hold the gun in the holster, not allow the gun to get released, get out. Um, I had his left hand clamped to my gun and my, holster, and my gun in the, pressed down in the holster. He was able to straddle my body, get his right hand around my throat. Tell the truth now. I'm going to throw you out of the courtroom. Take your hands out of your pockets and be quiet. You're going to have your opportunity, sir, to tell me your version of the story. How many times do I have to tell you that? Okay, continue. I, um, he's got his hand on my throat and his other hand on my, on my gun. I put my hand up to his head. I can still feel the ridge of his eye socket under my thumb with the intention of rolling my thumb in. I rolled my hand down across his face to rock his head back and force him off of me. When my hand came down across his face, he clamped down on my uh, left index finger. Um, still have a scar on each side. He clamped down. I felt his jaw rake across it. Um, his brother then got up to my right side. I felt his brother pry at my hand on the gun, and I don't Either I hit him with my elbow or I need him with my, with my knee. Must be his auntie. My hand got free Do at that point. Do me a point. favor. Would you stand behind him? Because I want to get this case over with, so I don't want to throw him out of the courtroom. But maybe your presence is there, Officer Bird. will remind him to keep his mouth shut until it's his turn. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Uh, Go ahead. When he yelled out, I was able to get my hand free. I pried his hand off my throat. Uh, at that point, I, I guess he felt he was losing control. He tried to stand up. Because I was holding both of his hands, he pulled me up as well. His brother put up both his hands on my chest and pushed me back to the ground, struck me, struck, uh, struck me trying to hit my groin missing. Um, Frank got up, took two or three steps. Um, I either pushed or punched his brother again to get him off of me. Frank took a step back, a step back and yelled, don't hit my brother. Um, I was able to get up. Frank ran to his car across the street. Maria was parked in the middle of the street on the phone with the, uh, with the local police department. Um, she witnessed the whole thing. Frank got away that night, and then I went straight from there. Police officer responded about 10 or 15 minutes later, took a report, and I went directly to the emergency room to get medical care for my finger. So the remainder of your lawsuit is for the bite? The bite, yes, ma'am. Okay, now it's your turn. Okay, first of all, there was a, we talked on the phone, and um, this is after two weeks. We spoke on the phone. Um, I have not yet even spoke to this man. I spoke to her, and she, her, her and my wife were talking. We agreed to come down to their office at that, that evening. Um, it was a, the call was about 4 o'clock. We agreed to be there about 8 o'clock. I left the house. I told her, I said, we'll go down there. Meet me down there at 8 o'clock. I have to go to my father's and run some errands, okay, for my father. Okay. This was at my father's place. Okay. He came... He came, um, I went outside, I was leaving after I ran the errands for my father, okay. Um, this was nighttime already, it was dark. Um, I go to my car, it was parked across the street, okay. As I'm going across the street, it's, it's dark too, there's not many lights out there. Now, um, he's hiding behind a bush, okay. All of a sudden, I'm walking across the street, I'm in the middle of the street, and somebody says, hold it, you move it, I'll shoot. He got his 357 out, pointing right at me, okay? And I, and I look at him. I don't know who he is. He never identified himself at all, okay? I don't know who the heck. He could be trying to rob me, you know? I run. I, I take off. As I'm running back to the, towards my place, okay, the garage, I turn around because he's right behind me. I turn around and smack him one, okay? Then I pick him up and throw. I pick him up and I throw him 
body slam him on my garage. Okay, th at this point, he's going for his gun again. Now, when he goes for his gun, I put my elbow up in his throat, okay, and, and, and he, I'm grabbing for the gun because I'm going to take it from him before he shoots me. Judge Judy continues in a moment. You're wrong about that. I'm wrong. I was wrong once in 1947. Honor, You're wrong again in, in, in 1998. Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. Bail bondsman Gene Wisenant says Frank Concepcion tried to jump bail. When he tried to collect, an altercation ensued. Just tell me your version of what happened that day. This man's going for his gun like it was a thing to do, like he's some super cop or something. You ain't about nothing, though. But I'm going to tell you, okay, because I'm, go, I'm going judge, for his man. gun. I'm going for his gun, all right? And this time, he's got, like he said, he's trying to put his finger in my eyes. Instinct, I just, I bite on that finger, all right? Then I, I pull the gun out from his holster and toss it in the bush. Now, I don't want some accident to happen because this, this guy's acting like a fool out there. Would just pull out his gun, you know, like, like he thinks he can do this. I haven't jumped bail. I haven't, I haven't missed my court date. I haven't even had my court date yet. And he's coming at me with a gun? Okay. Now, I have a couple of questions for you, sir. You were running errands for your father, and you were supposed to be at his office. Shut up. Just pay attention to me. Okay. You were supposed to be at his office at 8 o'clock. That was the plan. That's what you told me, correct? Right, right correct. Did you go to his office at 8 o'clock? The answer is either yes or no. No. Right, because when he came to your house, it was after 8 o'clock, correct? No, it was before no. 8 o'clock. What time? Four. What time? 7.30, 20 till. <laughs> okay. But he had came just to the house before Just a second. Just a second. Hey. I was there. Just, just answer my... Listen to me. There. Listen to me. Truth of the matter is, the two of you had absolutely no intention of going to his office yes, at 8 o'clock. Yes, I did. I was going. Yeah, it only takes 15 minutes to get there. Oh, baloney. They had no intentions of meeting us at, the, at their office. It was all set up. Uh, listen to me. It may have been a setup, but you had no intention of going there, paying the money, and having your picture taken, and it filling wasn't out the rest of the paper. Money. It wasn't about paying money. It was about, it was about signing a contract. a contract to pay two hundred dollars a month right. Uh, right. for the rebalance. Okay, of let's the pay. let's go. Let's finish up that. Let me get to the next thing that's troubling me about your version of this story, sir. When okay. you first started to tell me the story, you told me he was hiding in the bushes, which means that you saw him hiding in the bushes. No. And. Well, then how do you know he's hiding in the bushes? Because I crossed the street and he said, hold it, move and I'll shoot. That's when I oh, looked okay. and he was hiding in the bushes. Oh, I see. So you saw him hiding in the bushes. What did you say no for? You saw him hiding in the bushes, right? Okay. Then you just went through a whole story about where does he come off taking out his gun. It's only a bail and I hadn't missed my court date. Isn't that what you just told me? That's correct. Right. Just a minute. Then at the beginning of the story that you were telling me, you were telling me you thought he was a robber. They had to rob you. How could he be a robber and a bail bondsman at the same time? He never identified himself. I, I told you. You're not just, listening to me. No, I'm listening to you, sir. No, I told you he did not identify himself. He huh? never had. You said to me, how did, where does he come off pulling a gun, a 357 Magnum on me, as a bail bondsman? I'm speaking after the fact already, okay? Judge Judy continues in a moment. Listen, I've heard both stories. A, you owe him the money for the bail because that's what you promised, madam, to pay him. That's the written... Stand closer to him. Stand as close as you want, brother. That's what you promised. That's what you agreed. You agreed to come in and pay $1,200. Right? Right. So that's what you owe him. And what I am finding, based upon common sense, common sense is that he got out of jail and he said, let him come find me. No, that, you're wrong. Sure. You're wrong Didn't about come that. In. I'm wrong. I was wrong once in your 1947. Honor, you're wrong again. But since in, 1947, in I didn't. You are suing, sir, for assault. It's yes, clear sir. to me from his own version of what happened that he knew exactly who you were when you stopped him, that he was avoiding you, that the family was avoiding you, and that you were effectuating a lawful arrest in order to secure your bail because it was now two and a half to three weeks and the person for whom you had posted bail failed to come in to complete the necessary paperwork and failed to 
keep that part of the agreement that provided for the remainder of the 10% of the bail. So you had a, an absolute right to go in and effectuate an arrest under the laws of, in this jurisdiction, and you were assaulted. And I believe that he knew who you were, that what he should have done was stop immediately. He did not do that. Based, do upon, his own, based upon his own statement. Do you believe he identified himself? I'm not here to answer your questions. You answer my questions. Based upon his own statement, he turned around and struck you before you struck him. He said that, not you. He said he turned around and assaulted you. He so I'm granting Robert. you your judgment for $3,000. That's all. Bodies are excused. You may step out. Judge Judy continues in a moment. And on the next Judge Judy. You come at me. Yeah, I keep smiling like you that. Keep, yeah, you keep smiling, okay? Because you know it's wrong what you did, okay? I'll you again. You know it's wrong. <laughs> Especially in front yeah. of the kids. Do that stuff. You pull out a gun in front of my kids. Sucker, I'll beat you, all right? Don't. You're lucky I let you go, okay? You're lucky. You're lucky I didn't pistol with you with your own gun. This is a lady who, I assume, was a little lonely. Their 73-year-old mother spent thousands on her hairdresser before she died. Now her family wants the money back. He was constantly calling and asking her to do things for him. Well, it is sad. However, it made her happy. You are about to enter the courtroom of Judge Judith Scheinlin. The people are real. The cases are real. The rulings are final. This is her courtroom. This is Judge Judy. Parties on Flores versus Smith. Step forward, please. 45-year-old Nelani Flores says her late mother's hairdresser, Donald Smith, swindled her out of money before she died. Donald claims he and Nelani's mother were friends and the money was a gift. Order, all rise. Quiet in the courtroom, please, all rise. Judge, this is case number 316 on the calendar in the matter of Flores versus Smith. Parties have been sworn in, Judge. You may be seated. Have a seat, please. Miss Flores, your mother died suddenly. How old was she when she died? 73. And you claim at the time of her death, the defendant owed her money. And why she gave him money. Okay. Um, at the time of her death, we went through her financial matters. And um, with her checkbook and her bank statements was her ledger. My mom was a bookkeeper for 45 years. My mom would not just benignly give him a gift and write it down. I mean, if she gave a gift, she would not write it down. So you can't go in somebody else's head. That's correct. Even if they're no longer here. Right. So you found her ledger. Yes, I did. And with this ledger, I found his name, Donald Smith, of which I didn't know. I knew of him, but I've never met him before. How did you know of him? By my daughter, Tammy. <coughs> Tammy had gone to dinner with them one evening. And my mom paid for dinner, which Tammy thought was kind of strange. Anyway, um, from there, from Not dinner. Not in the 90s. <laughs> okay. Giving him money to gamble. And Tammy goes, well, that's kind of strange. When she came back home, she said, something strange is going on here. I said, what do you mean? She said, well, uh, he's taking money from her. Well, I mean, I didn't think anything about that till I found the ledger saying that there were bills incurred for Don. Doctor bills, loans to Don, more doctor bills, Mervyn's charge cards. Um, also, she had just recently purchased you furniture, of which um, my mother also kept a daily log of telephone calls that were made to him. Um, saying whether she called, whether he called, whether he didn't call. It seemed like when he had his appointments, he would call her. He would, she would also take him to work on a daily basis, um, which was like across town. They live in Las Vegas. She lives on the east side of town. He lives in North Las Vegas. So it was quite a commute for so her. So what? And, um, what? I mean, what does that mean to you, Ms. Flores? I mean that he was constantly calling and asking her to do things for him. So what? Is there anything wrong with your mother's mind? There wasn't at the time of her death, not that I know of. 
and she was 73 years old, which today is not an old person. Right. She was killed in a car accident. She had a tree. So let's just talk about the money okay. that she gave him to go gambling right. when they were out to pay for... Pay. That's really none of your business. That is correct. So, and I assume that you don't suggest that you're looking to recoup that money from him. Absolutely not. Only so, what was borrowed. Well, so that I would, what I'd like you to do is to show me, because that's mm -hmm. primarily what I'm going to look at. Right, it's right here. Also, here are credit card bills, of which it says Don owes for these, that were in her ledger. And here also is the furniture that she had purchased a month before she died. Well, who wrote Don owes for that? My mother. Let me see. Okay. Any and all transactions. Just a okay. Okay. What was your mother's name? Helen Roy. She was a client, a steady client, and I did her hair. And um, struck up a friendship, and after I graduated, she just followed me. I still did her hair in the, in the salons I was at, um, and the friendship still developed from there. Um, she didn't talk to her kids a lot, and I didn't have any family. That is not true. Shh, 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 I'm telling you, that's not true. Here are listen, my phone bills. Listen to me. Okay. It was All quiet. Right. Now you have to be quiet. All right. From what she told me, she didn't have the best relationship with him because they had owed her money. She had loaned them 10000 to get their house years ago and had never even attempted to pay her back, and they did have a contract with her. So that made a gap between them. Um, she did take me to work. If I need it, she made sure... I'm she not concerned good. about her taking you to work, sir. I'm not concerned about her taking you to dinner. This is a lady who, I assume, was a little lonely. And she found your company appealing. And she wanted to spend her money on you. That's her business. Judge Judy will continue in a moment. I didn't have any family growing up. She showed me what a, a nice a, a grandmother and a mother was. Aww. Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. Neilani Flores is suing her late mother's hairdresser, Donald Smith, for loans he never repaid. Miss Flores, I'm looking, is one page that you're talking the about? two pages, well, yes. The, these mm -hmm. two pages. Yes. And the others clearly indicate bills incurred for Don. Correct. That doesn't necessarily, madam, convince me that those were loans. You know, when you give money to somebody, especially, I can imagine a situation where you are mentality, you want to keep track of how much money you gave to somebody just for your own head. I mean, how many times do I wake up in the morning and I want to know how much money I have in my savings account, in my checking <coughs> account, and how much money I gave to this church? That particular person has cost me that year. <laughs> do you understand? It could just as easily have been that. That's, that's correct. $450, according to your mother, he still owes her $400 from this. Now, this piece of paper that it looks as if it's written in the same hand. That is her writing, yes. Right. Mm hmm But there is also no indication that this was a loan. Right. That's correct. But if the money wasn't owed, she wouldn't have written it down. I don't know that. I think that you have a difficult time, six. Of which we're still paying the bills for her, yes. Okay. His clothing receipts. There were many more receipts just that second, weren't included. Just a second, just okay. a second. I'm looking for her handwriting okay. on here. Because I do see one, and it seems to match the handwriting in her book, in her ledger, on this credit card. There's several Mervyn's receipts for men's clothing, of which are for him. Well, just a second. You have to understand yes. something, madam. What I just said to you was right. there were certain things that clearly your mother had denoted as loans, owes, loans. And all of this. And, and certain things on which there are no notes. They were all included in that book, though, Your Honor. You know, pinned inside together. The I only see one receipts. note of hers. Right. They were all pinned inside. Paper clipped. Paper clipped inside. What? There were also. There were also. What, what, she, what I think she's trying to say is that my mother-in-law was keeping, <laughs> was keeping track of the bills and anything she had spent on them, and that what she's trying to say is that those looked like they were all incurred as a loan to him. 
looks like is not alone. Okay. So, looks like is not alone. Okay. Telling me? Yes. They were clearly gifts, Donald. Miss Flores, don't You're talk to Miss Flores. Don't that's talk to him. That's what's wrong with the elderly, don't. though. That's how they're getting ripped off. You, Ms. Flores, sometimes you're absolutely right. And sometimes a lady who is 73 years old, living far away from her family, a couple of times a week. Is that a fair statement? Correct. If she has to pay for some companionship by buying a present or by giving a shirt or by buying furniture, unfortunately, that happens. And then when there is a tragedy like this, the family feels as if, guarantee you, she didn't feel as if she was being taken advantage of. She was having a good time. Did your grand... Step up here. You went out to dinner and you went gambling with your grandmother and the defendant? Yes, I did. Did your grandmother look like she was having a good time? Sure. Right. How many times did you go gambling with your grandmother? Every time I went up there. Well, how often was that? Um, once every couple months. Whenever I made it up to Vegas, I'd go. So once every couple of months, you took Grandma out for a spin. Yes, How many I times did. did you go gambling with Grandma? Usually once a week. I took Grandma. Grandma didn't take me. Just a second. Just a thing. It's her money! Judge Judy will continue in a moment. As you can see, she started out with 35000 in the bank. Two years later, she depleted her savings. You make me nauseous. If this camera went on, I swear to God, my dad would knock. Me. I swear to God. Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. Nailani Flores is suing her late mother's hairdresser, Donald Smith, claiming he swindled her out of thousands of dollars before she died. You're not responsible for your mother's debts. You know darn well that you're not under the law. So if you have to pay out any money for her, it's being paid out of her money. What money? There's no money left. Then if there's no money left, madam, then you don't have to pay anymore because children and grandchildren are not liable for the debts of their parents. I am certain that your lawyer told you that. This is her money. If she wants to go gambling with him and give him money five nights a week because that makes her happy, it may not be smart, it may not be preserving her estate, but she's lonely and she's not going to live for every two months while her great, when her granddaughter decides to come up and pay her a visit and take her out to dinner and gambling. That doesn't mean he's necessarily a nice person. I'm not even suggesting that to you. And I'm not suggesting that he didn't take advantage of her. He probably did. I think so, well, too. Absolutely. I know. Why not? A lot of people take advantage of the elderly. That's sad. Well, it is sad. However, it made her happy. Why was she paying his and money for job? It made your grandmother happy. If she didn't want to do it, she wouldn't have done it. She was of sound mind. And if she had to pay for an occasional escort, which is what he was, and he may have, he said that they were really good friends. Bull. However, <laughs> if she had to pay for it so that she had company a couple of times a week, that made her happy. Why are you complaining now? Because we're paying for his bills. No, you're not. What do you mean you're paying? Because in the will, what? it stated my mom is the executor of the will. So any monies be paid out for, for any of her expenses be paid out of that. So we What's did What's your first name? Tammy. Are you dumb? No, I'm not. Well, then let me tell you something. What you're saying to me is I try to explain it to you. Because your mother is the executrix of your grandmother's will, she does not have to go to her bank account, her personal bank account, and pay one sou for your grandmother's debts. The only money that can be used to pay for your grandmother's debts is your grandmother's money, which is not your money, no matter what you think. It is not your money. There may not be anything left for you after you pay the debts, but you three people do not have to dig into your own. It was your grandmother's money, and she could do whatever she diddly pleases with it, and it pleased her. It gave her a certain amount of pleasure to sport him around. I don't know why, but it did. <laughs> now, now, now that I've taken care of Down. that area, now I talk to you. So there were certain things clearly here that she indicated you owed her. Nothing that she gave, it was all gifts. That's not true. That's clearly not true. If it was as a loan, there would have been a contract made that I would have signed. Are you kidding me? That four, the Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. The 450 was I was in between jobs and she helped me out with the rent. 
I paid back the first payment of 40, and when I gave her that 40, she looked at me and says, that's all I wanted to know was that you made the effort. She goes, forget about the rest. Well, but that's not what it says here. That was a loan. Because that's what she is about this furniture. How'd you get the furniture? That was delivered to me, um, my understanding is a housewarming and a birthday present. I moved into a house I'm renting with my companion. Mm -hmm. um, it was a month of my birthday also. She wanted to go to a furniture store. She was asking me what I liked. Uh -huh. I can understand why you... After I moved in, what I had picked... Um... Some clothes. I can understand... Uh, taking you out to dinner. I can understand even giving you some gambling money when you go out. I don't have a problem with that. They may have a problem with $1,379 for furniture for you and your companion. That was her choice. It was not asked of her. She, it was, that's what she wanted to do. I know, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. That doesn't sit, that doesn't sit right with me. You have two men who live together, both employed, both employed. And there comes a point where certain things she wants to buy you, some clothes, she wants to take you out for dinner, she wants to make sure she has some company. But then there comes a point when it's sort of sickening. This is sort of sickening. Why? Why? That was her choice. We didn't ask, I didn't ask. I don't believe you. Came Did across... you just happen to be home when the furniture was delivered? No, I was at work, I had to go home. No, I did not know it was gonna be delivered that day. You're full of baloney. She also paid off. I mean, I had to go down. That didn't answer my question. It's not marked alone. Judge Judy is ready to rule. You're never going to recoup all the money that you gave him. It's not going to happen. But you should have at least some comfort in knowing that your mother had a good time. <laughs> she did. She had some young people around her that made her feel good. Your mom didn't call an escort service and said, send me somebody to have a good time with. They treated her nicely. They showed her a good time. They probably better than going by herself to a casino. You know, you know that that's true. And they took financial advantage of her. It's been happening for ages. But you don't recoup that. Unless there's some clear indication or some common sense, like with this furniture. Shirts and stuff like... <sighs> God. Okay. There are certain things that are clearly marked as loans. I'm counting up only those things, and, and I am including in it the furniture. Okay. Because you're sitting on it, you're sleeping on it, you're going to pay for it. And all those things together come to $2,104, judgment for the plaintiff. That's all. Thank you. Parties are excused. You may step out. Judge Judy will continue in a moment. And on the next Judge Judy. He made her feel like they were friends. The woman never bought herself furniture in 20 years. She turns around and gives this guy $1,700 worth. Not, not going to happen. And she sat on it and she slept on oh, it, too. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. sure she did. You are. You, you, you are so stupid. Oh, you know me so well. I never want to see you again, and I wish to God I never saw you in the first place. And now I know why she stayed away from you for so long. <gasps> Dad, don't, 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 don't even go don't. there. There will be justice for the elderly that they're constantly preyed on like people like you.
you put your ring on your credit card. Exactly. First mistake. Exactly. They got engaged when he was broke, so the bride-to-be footed the bill for the ring. Now they've split. My agreement was that I was going to pay for the ring that I was going to get her, not something that she didn't approve or like and wanted. Her. Women don't pay for their own engagement rings unless they're crazy. You are about to enter the courtroom of Judge Judith Scheinlin. The people are real. The cases are real. The ruling duty. Bodies on Munoz, Villapando, step forward, please. Nadine Munoz is suing her former fiance, Andy Villapando, for the money she put toward her engagement ring because he cheated on her. Andy says, Order, all rise. Your Honor, this is case number 288 on the calendar in the matter of Munoz versus Villa Pondo. Parties have been sworn in. Judge, you may be seated. Well, this is a new twist on an engagement ring case. <sighs> Miss Munoz, according to your complaint, you went shopping with this gentleman. Mm -hmm. You were becoming engaged, is that right? Yes. Yes. He didn't have any money or any credit? None whatsoever. So. You put your ring on your credit card. Exactly. First mistake. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. In addition to that, you say he charged some... To make a long story short, you're here, so that means you're no longer engaged. Exactly. We are no longer engaged. We're no longer in speaking terms whatsoever. And so tell me what you want from him. I want him to pay half of the engagement ring that... I also have the appraisal on the ring. I'm Where not interested in the appraisal. Okay. I'm interested in the bill of sale. Okay. Where is I it? I have the bill of sale. $3,000 ring on my income, and I know he probably couldn't do it either, but it was something that he... Earrings to go with it. And you have the earrings? Yes. Just a lot of money. It's designer. It's not ridiculous, but it's just, I mean, $7,000 for a designer when the actual ring is only worth... What I'm telling you is you're entitled to do with your money. She came to this court, right? Yes. You've been in treatment? Yes. I've been sober ever since. How long? Longer than I had two and a half months ago. I know. And I'm also on Prozac, and I've been... Miss Calder. Yes. She hasn't had a good time. Uh, you've been a friend for a long time. I'm going to give you five that, too. She feels terrible, and she didn't know what to do. Uh, it was either taking your jewelry, or not can be, are despicable, pun scum, afraid. That doesn't excuse her, but or so bring experience than the one you had here. Got it. Got it. You know, you got to remember what you write down, Mr. Barth. Gotcha. Always comes back to bite you in the behind. The girlfriend says she loaned him money for a truck. The boyfriend says he paid her back. He won me over, too. And, and... No, no, don't add two. He didn't win me over. <laughs> still it. My grandmother used to say, beauty fades, dumb is forever. But first... Why did you fix her car? I says, why didn't you call me? I told Nikki, why didn't you call me? I'm your parent. It's up to me to decide what's going to happen. You can't get along on your good looks forever, madam. You know? <laughs> After a while, the looks go. You are about to enter the courtroom of Judge Judith Scheinlin. The people are real. The cases are real. The rulings are final. This is her courtroom. This is Judge Judy.
Bodies on Johnson versus McDermott. Step forward, please. 21-year-old sound engineer Dean Johnson is suing his former girlfriend, Nicole McDermott. He says he loaned her money to fix her damaged car and was never repaid. Order, all rise. Quiet in the courtroom, please. All rise. Sheesh. Judge, this is case number 283 on the calendar in the matter of Johnson versus McDermott. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Parties have been sworn in. You may be seated. Have a seat, please. Mr. Johnson, according to your complaint, sir, you and the defendant were dating briefly. She had an accident in the car she was driving. Is the car your car? It was my parents' car. What kind of car was it? It was a Mazda 66. New? No, it was an 83. You got into an accident with the car. According to you, Mr. Johnson, the defendant came to you and she was very upset. Yep, scared of her dad's reaction, didn't know what she'd do. And I said, I know someone who can fix her car. Brought it over there and got it fixed. And while she said that she didn't have the money, I said, I could let you borrow the money. She said, sure, that'd be great. But at first, she denied it. She's like, no, don't do that for me. Please don't do that. I was like, all right, well, just if you need the money, and when you start your job, you can start paying me back. She's like, all right, because she was scared of what her dad was going to do. Got her car fixed. Two days later after that, she split on me. In so many words, like our relationship ended. And for about a year and a half, I tried getting in contact with her maybe like 10 times in a total of a year and a half, and I never got response back to her. Mr. Johnson, let's go back a little bit because you sort of fl fluffed over this oral contract that you had with her that you're suing on, sir. Mm -hmm. She came to your house and she said she was very upset. Well, she was crying and stuff. She didn't so know what far, she was going to do. Correct. She did not know what she was going to do. So far, he's correct. She's correct to the point where he just said that he said he'd lend me the money, and he never said that. He told me that he had a friend that owed him favors and that he would get it fixed. And I said... Yeah, for cheaper. Sh just, just... No, you never Don't said that. Don't interrupt. Go ahead. And so I was like, I was really scared. I was in shock. I just got an accident. And I said, no, because I don't have money to get it fixed. I'm just going to have to tell my dad. And then he didn't want me to get in trouble. So he said, no, no, we'll get it fixed. So we took it to the shop, got it fixed. When you took it to the shop, was there any discussion about $600? Not until he was going to get it fixed, and then the guy said, it'll be $600. So there was discussion about $600? Yes. Yeah. So. And then Dino, I looked at Dino, and he said, he said, no, they're going to take care of it. Because he said the guy owed him a lot of favors. That's not true. But then I did not. It didn't hit me until we were on our way home, and I asked him, who's going to pay for it? And he said, I will. And I said, no, I don't want you to pay for it. Take it out of the shop. And he didn't. And So you said to him, take it out of the shop? Yeah, I asked him to call them. And he said what? He said, no, don't worry about it. They'll take care of it. So you didn't say to him, take me right back to the shop and let's get it out I of the shop? I asked him to. I said, but he take didn't. me over there and, or call them. And he didn't. But then there came a time when you went back and picked up this car. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yes. A fixed car? Yes. Did you pay for the car, sir? Yes, I did. $600. Let she me was see, there. Let me see proof of that. She told me that when she got, when she was able to get a job, she would pay me back. I said, little payments are fine whenever. And she was like, okay. I'm going to pay you back, even when we were, like, breaking up or whatever, whatever we had together. Who signed for this? I did. Mm-hmm. I've taken many cars with Miguel. Miguel, that's the name of this person? Mm-hmm, Miguel's Auto Body Shop. Good. Let me make a call. Mm-hmm. Is this Miguel? Miguel, this is Judge Judy Scheindlin. Do you know who I am? Well, I'm a judge who is hearing a case uh, that has something to do with your auto body shop. And I have a couple of questions to ask you. Do you have a moment for me? Good. Do you know someone by the name of Dino Johnson? Yes. He says he's brought many customers to your shop. And 
This has to do with a car that was brought to you, a 1983 Mazda in 1995. He says he came in with a young woman who had been in an accident with her car. Yes? Well, could you tell me what you remember about that, sir? Right, so two or three weeks ago he came in and, you, and he asked you for a bill. Right, because I'm looking at this bill and it doesn't look as if it's a couple of years old. It looks like it's a relatively new bill. And it says here, sir, there's something that's circled, and it said he, that you were paid in cash. So how did you know it was $600? Oh, it's not an answer, Miguel. <laughs> okay, Miguel, you've been very cooperative. Thank you very much, sir. Bye-bye. Judge Judy continues in a moment. I said, well, I don't think my husband would have murdered his daughter. And I said, I would have been able to handle that. And later today... You know, you've got to remember what you write down, Mr. Boss. Gotcha. Always comes back to bite you in the behind. Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. Dean Johnson is suing his former girlfriend, Nicole McDermott, because he gave her money to fix her car, and she never repaid him. Nicole says Dean is angry because she broke up with him and started dating his friend. Now, Mr. Johnson, one of the reasons I went to make a phone call is this didn't look like something you had had around for two and a half years. Mm. So, Miguel seemed to know all about this lawsuit. Mm -hmm. I figured maybe he has no business because two and a half years go by, boy, he remembered everything, like she was your girlfriend and then broke up with you and, and he knew the whole story. That led me to believe that you had been there more recently. Yeah, because my mechanic is right next door. No, because you needed a new bill. Yeah, and I got a new bill, and she was there when I paid for it. Now, just a second. You got I'm a new bill. You. you got a new bill. This he gave you a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. This was not the original bill. Mm -hmm. He has no invoice with regard to it because I asked him how come he remembered that it was $600. He said, well, he remembers that it was $600. He had no invoice because he wrote paid cash, which means that he didn't write it down anywhere else. Exactly. Well, I have no doubt that $600 was, in fact, paid because, according to Miguel, who I believe, who was very honest with me on the phone, he said that the original estimate was much more, about $850, but because he was referred by a friend and had done a lot of work there, he said it, he would do it for less. I have another couple of questions for you, Ms. McDermott. You say you rear-ended this car and you had hundreds of dollars worth of damage on your car. Mm -hmm. What happened to the other car? The other car, it was like, it was a Ford Explorer. There was only a small scratch and it was a rental car, so they didn't care. So he didn't care? No, so nothing happened here. Did you ultimately tell your father about this? Yes, I did. When? I told him approximately, he found out, and then I told him about two months after it happened. Are you working? Yes. You have to pay for this. It's reasonable, right? He was being mm -hmm. a nice guy. See, I, I, he told me I didn't have to worry about paying him back. And he even told my mother that on the telephone, that I don't have to worry about it. And she asked him, what happens if she breaks up with you? And she and Oh, well, let said, me, Trisha, don't tell me. Let her tell me. You're her mother. Yes. Your I last name about is? It, McDermott. Yes. I learned about the accident approximately two days after the accident. The car was already in the shop. It was almost repaired, and they were ready to pick it up. I had spoke to Dino about it. I said, Dino, we don't have the money to pay you for the car. My husband, one of the reasons why we hadn't told my husband, he had had seven surgeries in the last four years. He was having a very hard time with his health, and I didn't want to tell him. I kept things from him because I didn't want to disturb his health anymore. Good idea. But... I told Dino, I said, Dino, why did you fix her car? I says, why didn't you call me? I told Nikki, why didn't you call me? I'm your parent. It's up to me to decide what's going to happen. He says, well, she couldn't have driven it that way, and her father would have gotten really mad. I says, well, your, she, he said her father would have killed her. I says, well, I don't think my husband would have murdered his daughter. And I said, I would have been able to handle that. I said, she would have either, one, had to have driven the car like it was, if it was drivable. I never saw it. I said, or found alternate transportation. Mm -hmm. He says, don't worry about it. 
She doesn't have to pay me back. And it was like That's a done deal. She didn't have to pay me back right away. It was as soon as she got a job because she wasn't working at the time. I said even twenty dollars, ten dollars here and Ms. there. Miss McDermott, listen to me. You have to teach your daughter responsibility. How old is she? She'll be twenty. And so this happened two and a half years ago. So she wasn't quite eighteen, correct? Right. Well, then you have to teach her responsibility. I can understand that. Seventeen years old, still a baby. They do a lot of stupid things. But she was in an accident with the car. And if you're in an accident, you have to bear responsibility for taking care of it. I can understand her boyfriend at that time saying, listen, don't worry about it. You're not working. You know, I don't want you to get in trouble with your father. I will help you out. But then within a relatively short period of time, they weren't a couple anymore. Don't you think it's the responsible thing for your daughter to do to pay her debts? Don't you think so? Sure well, it is. Now, but you have another <laughs> problem, Mr. Johnson. Judge Judy will continue in a moment. And later today... My grandmother used to say, beauty fades, dumb is forever. Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. Dean Johnson says his former girlfriend, Nicole McDermott, borrowed money to fix her car and never paid him back. Nicole claims the money was a gift. You have another problem, Mr. Johnson. How old are you, sir? 21. So you were over 18 when you made this arrangement with Miss McDermott. Yes. And she was under 18. Mm hmm Is that right? I believe so. I wasn't exactly sure of her age. How old were you? I was... I think she just turned I think 18. I just turned 18. You did just turn 18. Are you lucky? Because if she were under 18, <laughs> she couldn't make a contract with you, even uh, a verbal one. You understand that? I do now. She can't be bound by it. She can't be sued on it. But if she were over, it was over 18, then she has reached her majority. Miss McDermott, you have to take care of your bills. You drive a car, there are expenses. You have an accident, you have to pay for them. That's why I didn't want him to fix my car. But he fixed it, madam. And you're over 18, and you were sitting in the car, and nobody said you had to leave the car there. It was drivable. You could have said, forget it. I don't have the money. I'm going to deal with my father. He didn't do that. Don't take advantage of a situation. How much after this did you two break up? Like, it was about a week. About a week. Maybe even less than that. That's like a very expensive week. He didn't even want the money All back. All right. Until Miss McDermott, you can't get along on your good looks forever, madam. You know? <laughs> After a while, the looks go. <laughs> and you have other things that you have to rely on, and that is your good name and integrity and responsibility and all those good things. Now, if you two had ended up an item, you got married and whatever. If he came to me 20 years later and said to me, she owes me $600 for the car, I would have shown him the door. But he did this because he cared for you. So you're supposed to do the right thing. And the right thing is to pay him back his money. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $600. Why does I excuse you may step out? <laughs> back to your right. And now the next case. Bodies on Daly versus Barth. Step forward, please. 29-year-old Christina Daly says she loaned her ex-boyfriend, Matthew Barth, money to buy a truck, which he never repaid. Matthew claims he sold the truck and gave Christina the money, making them even. A long time ago... Yes. He was your boyfriend. Yes, And these papers say that while he was your boyfriend, he needed a truck. Yes. But he had no money. That's correct. So he asked you for the money, and you gave him how much? I wrote him a check for $4,000. And you don't seem to deny that, sir. No, the only part that I would deny is that she offered me the money. But That's not correct. Just a second. Let's not fight back and forth. $4,000 was the amount. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this happened about four years ago. Is that right? I wrote the check on July 19th of 1993. Okay. And then... Your relationship was over. Yes. That was in 94. But you had the truck. Yes, I did. And you have, and you've never, according to her, you've never paid her back the $4,000. That's correct. Now, Mr. Barth, I read your answer very carefully, sir. And you seem to have a whole menu of defenses to this action. Yes. A whole menu. So let me see if I've got them all. Because, you know, I'm getting old, so I may forget one or two. 
First, you say it was a gift and not a loan because she offered you the money. Correct? Correct. Then you say, I think I paid her back. I did pay her back a portion of the money. Then it, you correct? say the statute of limitations ran. <laughs> that is a defense, Your Honor. Your second defense belies the first defense, because if you say you paid her back the money, or at least a portion of it, that would suggest to me that you acknowledge that there was, in fact, a loan. Yes. So we want to take that first defense that it was a gift and sort of shove it, right? OK, well, gift and then offering the money. But uh, under terms, I would probably believe that I would have to pay her back the money. So as a gift, it's something you, didn't, you don't pay back. Did you understand that? So I guess. Well, let's, let's, let's do this again very slowly, <laughs> Mr. Barth. Why don't Absolutely. you try again with me in English? OK, um, it was a loan. And I accepted the loan. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> now, $4,000. And you say you paid her back. Yes. Tell me about it. Well, when Look at the here. termination of the relationship, yes. I had to sell the truck. Why is that? Because it, in order for me to get any kind of ground to pay her back, I have to come up with some money to pay her back. Yeah. So I sold the truck. Uh -huh. And I paid her back what I received for the truck. That's not correct, Your Honor. Just a second. So you say that when you broke up, in order to be able to pay her back for this loan, which you felt obligated to do, you sold the truck and gave her back the money? Yes. How much did you give her back? $2,500. And that was the reason? Is that correct? Yes. Uh-huh. You know, you've got to remember what you write down, Mr. Barth. Gotcha. Always comes back to bite you in the behind. <laughs> All right? I sold the truck shortly thereafter. The intent was to dissolve anything that would link us together. Mm -hmm. That yeah. smacks more of an emotional reason for selling this truck than an obligation. So let us assume for the moment, sir, let us assume for the moment that I believed you, which mm -hmm. I don't, unless you have proof, of course, of the check that you gave her. No, oh, of course not. Don't, don't. Uh, <laughs> what happened to the other $1,500? $1,500, the truck wasn't worth what it was originally worth. So well, since when did she become a partner in your misfortune? You bought the truck for $4,000. If you acknowledge that you made a loan, $4,000, and you sold it for $2,500, she didn't become a partner in your loss. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now. Did you ask him for this money? Yes, I did. On several occasions, I've asked him for the money. And what he always, how he would respond to me was, I would love to pay you the money back, but I do not have the money. And I believed Matt because we were together for two and a half years, and Matt never had any money. And so I believed him when he told me that, and I trusted but him when he told me. he's got a great smile. He's very charming. <coughs> yes, he won me over, too. And, and no, no, don't add two. He didn't win me over. <laughs> Miss Daly. <laughs> Miss Daly. Didn't win me over, madam. Okay, well, you're smarter than I. <laughs> Judge Judy is ready to rule. Mr. Barth! Yes, Your Honor. You owe her $4,000. And I leave you with this one thought. You're not going to be gorgeous forever, sir. Eventually, you're going to have to rely on people respecting you, trusting you, feeling as if you're reliable and responsible, because there are a lot of pretty faces out there. Right? My grandmother used to say, beauty fades, dumb is forever. <laughs> Judgment in this case is for the plaintiff in the amount of $4,000. That's all. Parties are excused. You may step out. Judge Judy will continue in a moment. And on the next Judge Judy. I did give her some money when I sold that truck. And, and that's... Where's the check? It was never a check, Christine. You it know, wasn't it was a check? Money. It was cash. Absolutely you know not, that. Matthew. I'm, I'm not that stupid to receive $2,500 in cash. But he's such a selfish person. They lived and loved together for eight years until the Camaro came into their lives. You have the Camaro. Correct, Your Honor. You have the stereo. Correct, Your Honor. She has the visa bill and fond memories of you. 
and you put the car in whose name? Joint. That's at least one smart thing that you did. Yeah. You are about to enter the courtroom of Judge Judith Scheinlin. The people are real. The cases are real. The rulings are final. This is her courtroom. This is Judge Judy. Parties on Creech versus Daniels. Step forward, please. Susan Creech is suing Thomas Daniels, her 48-year-old live-in lover of eight years. Susan says Daniels left her just a month after she bought him a Camaro. Daniels, a driver by occupation, took the car with him. Order, all rise. Quiet, please, all rise. Your Honor, number 20 on the calendar, the matter of Creech versus Daniels. Parties have been sworn in. Judge, you may be seated. All right, Miss Creech, you were in a relationship with this gentleman for about seven years, according to your complaint. Yes. And towards the end of that relationship, you say you lent him money to buy a car. Right. $4,000 to buy the car and another $1,100 for what? For a uh, stereo and an alarm. And how much after you made this loan to him did you separate? About a month and a half. You couldn't tell that there was handwriting on the wall? No. No? No, I guess he could, but I couldn't. You, sir, say that this was a gift? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. So? Not. Tell me how it came about. Okay. We had a car that we bought together, um, a Trans Am that we were going to sell. A Trans Am? The deal was he came home on uh, March 28th and he took off with the car. The Which Trans car? Am. The Trans Am with his friend, supposedly to show it to somebody to sell. But actually, it went down to another woman's house. And um, so then he, uh, at the same, the next morning, he took off with the, uh, the Camaro. Just a minute. How did we get to the Camaro? I want to know how you bought the Camaro. I bought it with, uh, my, my dad died and he left me some money. And um, it was in a separate account with my name on it. And I wrote the check to the company. How did you account. find this Camaro? Oh, we were shopping for parts at a, at a wreckage company and they had the car for sale. And it was this was about deal. a month before you separated. Right. So it was on what was the conversation Day. like when you saw this car? Well, we were looking at the car and he said, God, this is a good deal for $4,000 and it's 10 years younger or older, younger than what I already have. And so I said, well, let's think about it because at the time he had quit his job and he wasn't working. And I said, if you get a job, then we'll get the car. Well, Monday came, he told me he had a job, which was a big lie. And then he what went back to What did he say to you? He got a job doing what? Driving a truck like he always does. And you were living together at this time? Yeah. And you lived together the entire seven-year period? On and off. Okay, go ahead. So anyway, um, on Thursday, the previous Thursday, he told me I have a job, and I start Monday. So I believed him like an idiot, and Monday came and went, and so did the job. And then he went in, and uh, he has a drinking problem. He went in, and he told me they decided not to accept me because, um, you know, the insurance wouldn't accept him. What, what do you mean? Well, you mean when the you insurance have for the trucking job. Right, because he had a DUI like 10 years ago on his record. Okay. So, but the time was a little fishy, like when he left to when he went to this job. So, amazing, he comes back to San Jose and he got his old job back, where he always gets it back. You know what I mean? Because when he works, he works well. It's when he doesn't work, he drinks. So, we got the job back and um, started driving the truck. But I never got any money back. Just a ever. second. I still didn't hear you bought the car. Oh, then we went back to, to where this, you know, car was for sale, and he had a job, and I wrote the check, and the deal was he was supposed to be paying me back some money, but the money never came. Now, when you got the car, mm -hmm. you paid for the full amount, is yes. that right? So far, is that correct, sir? Uh, paying for the full amount, it is, Your Honor. Okay. And you put the car in whose name? Jointly. Joint? Joint. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Well, so far... That's at least one smart thing that you did. Yeah, once in my life, yeah. Okay. And then a month later, you separated. Right. But he also wanted a stereo in the car and an alarm. Well, a, a week or two after that, we went down to this place where we had bought an, um, stereos and alarms before and just had it put in. I put it on the visa. It was $1,100. So that's how... So this was two weeks before you separated. We bought the car on the 14th of uh, February, mm -hmm. and we bought the stereo on the 22nd of February. And when did you separate? The 29th of March. Not a long time. No. 
So now you've got a, a nice new, new Camaro with a stereo and an alarm. Yes, Your Honor. And what caused you to separate? Um, her story is pretty well to the point. Uh, there's a few things that are just kind of a little iffy on that. For one thing, the other car is a 76 Pontiac Firebird, not a Trans Am. There's a difference. Okay. And another thing, uh, the part about getting a job never came up. In Let's start about the part about the car. That is the car. Such a lie. The car. Okay. You car. are such a liar. Shh. Car. Uh, Ms. Why Creech? would I buy a Ms. car Creech? with he had no job? Ms. Creech. To pay me back. Such a liar. Are, are we done? Shh. No, yeah. we're not done. Ms. Creech. We're done. If you want to talk to him, you go outside. If you okay. want to talk to me, you can stay here. Okay. Thank is you. Is that fair? Sure. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. <clears throat> seven years of this. Anyway, what I'm saying is um, there was no contract. We went to get parts for my car. No contract with whom? Her and I. Let me have... You think that there should have been a contract between no, 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 the two no, no, no. of you? No, there shouldn't have been a contract because there was no, there was no question in my mind that... That it, what? That we were buying a car and it was going to be my car. She can't... Can you drive a stick? Just a second. Can you... She can't drive a stick, Your Honor. What does that got to Listen do with to me. anything? Listen to me. She said that you were buying this car because you were going to sell the old car that you had. That's perfectly correct. I know, because that's what you put in your answer. Right, but the thing is, there was no time that I was going to sell the car. I said, I'm going to sell the car, which doesn't mean I had a buyer for it. The car is for sale right now. The car's in Riverside. Shh, just it, a second. Shh, 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 shh. The car has a for sale sign on it right now, Your Honor, in Riverside, at yeah. this young, young lady's house. Yeah. Okay? The Why car, do you think... But, and you have, so you have both cars. Yes. She just, let me understand this. Let me just put on my thinking cap and understand okay. this whole thing. You have the Pontiac, right? Correct, Your Honor. You have the Camaro. Correct, Your Honor. You have the stereo. Correct, Your Honor. You have the alarm. Correct, Your Honor. She has the visa bill. Correct, right, Your Honor. Right, just a second. She has the visa bill. <laughs> she has the visa bill. She has... The check stub for four thousand dollars, and fond memories of you. That's what she has. You think that that's fair? Uh, Your Honor. Uh, no. uh, Your Honor, I know who I am. Do you think that that's fair? Judge Judy continues in a moment. Why did you break up, sir? I that's told her point. either he goes or I go. Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. Thomas Daniels says his former living, Susan Creech, is mad because he left her after eight years. Susan says he left with the Camaro she paid for. So how are we going to make it fair, sir? Well, if I can convince you that I... <laughs> Shh. Order. <clears throat> you asked me a question earlier about... If you could convince me what? If I can convince you that, that there was no... Con she bought this... She bought this... Uh, uh, Friday, we went and took a look at the car. We didn't talk about the car all weekend long. Monday, she goes, do you want to go and let's go and get your car? And I never mentioned it to her. Not one word did I say to her. Friday, we talked about it. We discussed it. I said, I'll put the Firebird up for sale. Just Finally, a minute. Let's go back. Gotcha. Okay. Stop. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> you said you discussed it. And you mm -hmm. said, I'll put the Firebird up for sale. Whatever we get to the Firebird, we can put towards this. And then we will pay it off. No. 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 I said I would put the Firebird up for sale. For what? Huh? Well, I can't drive both cars, Your Honor. And what are we going to do with the money that you got from the Firebird? Okay. Oh, we had okay. a joint. We not had a joint. Okay. Answer we had, my question. Your Honor, we had a joint account. Just a second. My checks went with her account. Her checks went in her account. Okay. She had my all the cards. Just a second. My checks, you just said, went with her account. You're damn right. And her check. Your Honor, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My checks went in. Her account, and her checks went in? Her account. Her account. Joint. We had a joint account, okay? So that all the checks went together. Right. Who had You were going to sell the Firebird. And put it back in, in the in... joint account. Yes, Your Honor. That's okay. So that you have money to pay for the visa, the $1,100 paying Very off the good. visa, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. right. right? Just a minute. Am I right so far? Yes, Your Honor. Well, then you didn't sell the Firebird, and I am correct. 
she has the memories and the bills, and you have the cars and the stereo. Correct. Mm -hmm. So then what's the problem? Ms. Creech. Yes. I don't see that there's any, I don't see, quite frankly, sir, that there's any problem. You bought this car and there was an understanding, a seven-year relationship, there was an understanding that well, you were going to use this car together. Evidently, you did the driving, she was the passenger in the car most of the time when you traveled together, you were going right. to have one car. You were going to sell the Firebird, you were going to have the Camaro, right? She has her own car, Your Honor. That's true, but I also have my own vehicles, which I drive. She can't drive my car, Your Honor. She knew going into this deal, going into this proposition, that it was a stick, Your Honor. She can't drive a stick. He always buys cars that have sticks. Every they're, single car. They're my vehicles. They never own. But you, just a second, if you buy, they're your vehicles. If you buy them, she bought this one, and you with say it was, our money, Your Honor. What do you mean with our? Just a minute. It was she a says, joint account. It was a joint account, Your Honor. It was she, our money. Just a second. My <laughs> money went in there also. It was not just her money. Hold on, hold on. Four thousand dollars. She said this four thousand dollars came from. In seven days. years' time. In Pro seven years' time, I have worked more than four thousand dollars, Your Honor. No, we're not. Oh, talking. I have put minute, money in no, this no, bank. No, no. Just a second. Talking about the $4,000 right. that she took out of an account. Did she oh. take that out of your joint account? No. No. Well, then that wasn't your joint money. <laughs> Funny, we we're had not no going money back in to it, the, huh? Listen, sir, we're not going back to the year of the flood. You were together seven years. You ate a lot of meals during those seven years. Drank a lot you of beer. You paid a lot of rent. You, whatever. You, she says you drank a lot of booze. Lots. Whatever it was, you lived over that seven years. You can't say, well, I must have given her $4,000 over that seven years. Mm -hmm. that, that, that doesn't sound right to you. This no. $4,000, she says, came out of a probate account when she, someone in her family died and left her some money. Right. And you, but is it your position that she bought you these things as a gift because, as a gift? As a gift. Why? Because she loved you? Yeah. And because she thought you were going to be together? I would thought, yeah. Okay. So that, that dream lasted another four weeks after she bought this stuff. But there's a lot more to it. You're under the I know. I'm not interested in what happened six years ago and five years ago. What I want to know, sir, is what was the precipitous for your breaking up four weeks after you bought this car? Okay, Your Honor. That's me. She, she has a son, a 19-year-old son who does not work, does not go, has been graduated out of school, does nothing more than run around with gangs, does nothing more than get stopped for, wait a minute, doesn't get stopped for tagging, gets thrown in jail for tagging. I've told her that she goes to work at 11 o'clock at night. I, I stay home and sleep. Why did you break up, sir? I That's told her point. either he goes or I go. Okay? He was staying. I said, hasta la vista. And I left. Judge Judy continues in a moment. As long as I never have to see or hear from you again, I'm, I'm happy. Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. Ex-lovers Susan Creech and Tom Daniels are fighting over the Camaro she bought just before they broke up. Two weeks after I'm gone, she kicks him out of the house and then says to me, well, you were right. Not two weeks. Sh just a second. Just a second. Same she day. says, Hold you're it. right. You're right. Right. I said, but what did it take me leaving the house for? Because we've been fighting about it for months, literally months. And it got to the point where I just said, hey, I'm beating my head against the wall. I come home here and try and get a good night's sleep, and all I'm doing is listening to boom boxes at 2.30 in the morning. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to go down there. And I got tired of threatening the kid, OK? It doesn't prove that I'm a big man, because I can threaten a 19-year-old kid, all so, right? So I got tired you, of it. So why are you angry with her? Why? Angry with her? Shh. Yeah, why are you angry with her? You gave her because a choice. Because I gave her all the warnings no, in no, the world. Your Honor, I gave her all the warnings in the world. I said, look, either he goes or I go. I'm giving you, I gave her 30 days. 30 days came and passed. I gave her 60. You have what children? was I going to do? You have children? Do I have children? I, I, my why own, yes. Why do you keep repeating yes, my Honor, questions? I do. How old are your children, sir? 21, 27, and uh, 16, I guess. What do you mean you guess? I don't see them. You don't see them? No. Why is that? I don't see my children. Well, That's not fair then question. let me suggest this to you, sir. It's very difficult for a parent, in this case a mother, to be faced with an ultimatum, even from a maid of seven years, that says it's either your son or me. When you say you've got 30 days to choose your son or me, even though he's a pain in the neck, listen, that's not an easy choice for a mother to make. 
She clearly cared for you. She cared enough for you, and she doesn't look like a lady who's got money coming out of every poor. So she clearly cared enough for you to go out and say, you want this car, you really like it, here's $4,000, I'm going to buy this car because I know it will make you happy if we have this car. And, I, and you also like a nice stereo in the car, I'm going to take money out for that too. So that True. you can have a nice stereo in the car. So she's clearly a, la a lady who cared for you. But when, when you ask, when you ask, when you tell her, you got 30 days to choose between him or me, even if this son of hers is a real royal pain in the rump, which I believe he probably is. He was. Right? Because so after, was <laughs> afterwards, you told him, out. Right. It's not easy to accept that kind of ultimatum from anybody when it comes to a child. Well, the problem so you, was, though, he had plenty of chances. He's done some really choice things in his life. I felt like I was giving everybody chances. But he's such a selfish person, he has to have everything to himself. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's not a very difficult decision to make. You left, you would have been having problems, according to your statement, Mr. Daniels, for months with regard to this boy. So why did he take both cars? I, I'd like to know why. I wasn't planning on leaving one to have it trashed. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. How about the, Daniels, how about the, how about the Firebird? Daniels. How about the Fiaro? How about the Fiaro? Who keyed the Fiaro? Me. Thank you. I'm going to leave a Pontiac sitting there by itself, Your Honor. Why would I? For this woman to key up again? If Mr. Daniels. Doesn't make she, Mr. Sense. Daniels. It still wasn't her you, car. Why didn't you bring the, leave her the Camaro? Pardon me? Because he wanted what, but just a second. Car. What word didn't you understand? I wanted the Camaro. Because yeah, but just a... You wanted Thank the you. Camaro, Mr. Daniels, but she paid for it. I want, but she paid for it. If you were leaving after four weeks, it seems to me a little disingenuous of you, sir, to leave and take a car that she had just purchased for you. Judge Judy is ready to rule. Need help in a divorce dispute? Call 1-888-800-JUDY. Let me ask you this question. Do you think she bought you, bought, and I keep saying bought you, bought this car for you to use because she had faith that your relationship was going to continue? Yeah, I'm sure she had. Ah, okay. It's a no different a situation to me, sir, from somebody giving somebody an engagement ring. And it's always been my position that when a man buys a woman an engagement ring, that's given under a sort of a contract that they have, that they will be together and that they will marry. And in the event that that marriage does not take place, it has always been my position that the ring has to go back to the man. Now, a lot of women say, listen, he gave that to me, it was a gift. But the gift was given with the intention, that ring was given with the intention of the marriage taking place. When that doesn't happen, the contract is over. This car was bought in contemplation of the two of you being together. Maybe if, we, if you had been together for 20 years, I would say, well, you know, you were together for 20 years after you bought this car, so that was sort of fulfilled. But there is something that doesn't sit right with me here that you left in a month's time, taking the car, the stereo, as well as the alarm the alarm should have gone off in your head. The judgment in this case is for the plaintiff in the amount of $5,000. Can I say one more thing? Yes. Is there a way that you can make him bring the other car up from Riverside? Because he wants me to go down <coughs> and get it. Madam, let me explain something to you. You've just told me this man drinks. Mm -hmm. He is selfish. True. He's self-centered. Mm -hmm. He gave you an ultimatum with regard to your child. Right? True. He perhaps has not been totally faithful to your relationship? Big time. When, mm -hmm. Big time? Big time. Mm -hmm. You just won You're a judgment right. for $5,000. What do you want a 20-year-old Pontiac for? Right? True. Perfect. $5,000 for the plaintiff. How does I excuse you may step out? On the next Judge Judy. He just doesn't like to tell the truth. That's all. I don't know what else. That's your opinion. He has no conscience, he has no That's heart. your opinion. That is my opinion. Okay, that's not my opinion. That's okay, he asked me. As long as I never have to see or hear from you again, I'm, I'm happy, all right? I had a drunk driving ticket in 1989. And he's been drinking Since that time, since. I have not had a ticket since. Luckily. I have a perfect drive. Luckily. You, you want to speak for no, me or what? No, luckily. Why don't you just hush? Well, it's time he's quitting his job. 
most of the time he's philandering. Isn't, am, I, am I lying, Thomas? It's your tail. Am I lying, it's Thomas? It's her tail. Yeah, okay. You know, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, I have no more to say. She can speak okay. speaking for me. No problem. She's done it for seven years. Why should she not do it now? What is that this table? This shows her leaving the baby on the couch and saying, don't fall off, don't fall off. When mom came home and checked her hidden camera video, she fired the babysitter and refused to pay her fees. And it also shows her throwing the infant into the air. You still left your child alone with her. Five days. I regret having done it, but yes, I did. And let me tell you, that baby is absolutely delicious. You are about to enter the courtroom of Judge Judith Scheinlin. The people are real. The cases are real. The rulings are final. This is her courtroom. This is Judge Judy. Parties on Early versus Yates. Step forward, please. 25 year old child caregiver Leslie Early claims she was wrongfully fired by Maxie and Tim Yates. The Yates say they won't pay her because she lied about her background as a convicted felon. Order, all rise. Yeah, this is case number 372 on the calendar in the matter of Early versus Yates. Parties have been sworn in, Judge. You may be seated. Ma'am, have a seat. Please. Ms. Early, your complaint alleges that you were hired by the defendants to babysit for their child. Beautiful baby. That's me. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Look at him. Okay. And that you did babysit for him for a week? and you were supposed to be paid $250, you were not paid. Correct. They have what they consider a very legitimate reason for not paying you. Tell me how you were hired by the defendants. How did they find you? Uh, I called an ad that was listed in the Union Tribune, the paper, and we set up an interview, and I went to their house, and they met me and talked with me for a while and hired me that night, and uh, I started work, I, I believe it was... Uh, two days after that night. Um, Had you been working before? I've worked before, but no, I was not working at the time. Had no. you ever done childcare before? Uh, yes. I've never been paid for it, but my mother is a foster mom for newborn babies. But you so had I grew up not done childcare before? No. Okay. And the agreed salary was $250 a week? Uh, no, it was... Uh, 800 a month, but their $50 was what they figured. And then I let them $50 was what they figured. And then I let them, reminded them about $7 that I spent of my own money on grocery food. Um, I went grocery shopping. But you did, in fact, stay with the baby for a week. I stayed for a week and two days. Okay, and when were you let go? I was let go a week later after I had worked the whole following Monday through Friday the following Saturday I got a phone call and I was let go from who who made the phone call Maxie can you tell me what that conversation was uh, she called to let me go and said that she had her reasons that it was very difficult for her to leave the baby um, alone while she was working and that she needed to have surgery done and that she wasn't going to be going back to work and I was kind of upset by it because I, you know, was happy working there and I really enjoyed working for them and for the little boy. I mean, he's adorable. And I asked, does it have anything to do with me? And I was told absolutely not and that I should be a housekeeper was the quote that she said because um, she was very happy with the housework I did. I did a lot of housework. She asked me if I would like the check mailed to me or uh, if I'd like to come pick it up. And I said, I'd like to come pick it up. And they said that they had some errands to do and stuff and to call them later that day. The check was not forthcoming. So, I mean, I've read your statement, so I know that right. they, according to you, they kept promising that the check was in the mail. The, the check, check was, was in never the in the mail. Never. Ultimately, they told you they were not going to pay you. In the end, three weeks right. later. Three weeks later, After what did they tell you? After phone calls of being promised my money was coming, I said, can I come over and pick up a check? And they said, well, we need to talk. She explained to me that she didn't think I did the job I was supposed to do and that I was sleeping in their house, that I was taking showers in their house. All this is very untrue, and that they had a videotape of me. I started getting upset and started to cry. And he took the phone and said, what seems to be the problem? I started getting upset and started to cry. 
and he took the phone and said, what seems to be the problem? He talked with her, and she proceed, Maxie proceeded oh. to tell my boyfriend, Stefan, he talked with her, and she proceed, Maxie proceeded oh. to tell my boyfriend, Stefan, that I abused their baby, that, uh, and then again, that I was sleeping and showering, and... Did went, you sleep in the house? No. Did you ever shower in the house? No. Okay. Now, you want to tell, so you were not paid? No. You want to tell me why? I'm glad. Sure, her accounts are fairly accurate. Um, she did come to work, as she stated. Uh, we had an interview with both my husband, myself, and I. Actually, Your Honor, if I could sub submit some uh, information for evidence, I'd, I'd appreciate that. What is it? Um, we, have a, we had a, a background check run on Miss Early. Um, we've got 12 pages worth of, um, she's got, got quite a criminal history. Uh, we asked her whether or not she had a background, criminal background. She stated to us that she did not. One of the requirements of employment was that she be fingerprinted, and um, we let her... One of your requirements. Correct, yes. and that was to be done within the first three days of employment, and she, did, she never submitted the fingerprints. Um, she did, however, and I have a copy of this, she su submitted to us her driver's license, uh, which is an alias name that she is using. She's got 12 pages worth of um, I have no other criminal names. background. Um, she's a, um, can, a habitual felon. Um, much of her background is... Um, you And you didn't get that information until we, when? Uh, the, actually, the Monday that she began, that she was alone with the child, uh, we had gotten a report back from the investigators saying that the local check had cleared and that, you know, they didn't find anything on her, so we felt confident. And the Friday that we let her go, we got the out-of-state check, which was, we've got 12 pages worth I'll of look her at history. That. I'll look at that in a moment. Okay. Judge Judy will continue in a moment. I've had no other aliases. I've had no other names. Not according to this, madam. Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. Leslie Early says Maxie and Tim Yates owe her for babysitting. The Yates claim that a secret videotape shows Leslie endangering their child. You indicate in your answer that you had, in fact, set up a surveillance, a babysitting surveillance video. Correct, yes. And when did you start this video process. We started that the Monday that she began by herself with the baby. And did you view the video that night? We did, yes. Was there anything untoward on the video that night? Well, on that evening, there were some things that we were slightly concerned about, but we thought that we could speak with her and without really letting her know, because why give it away um, and get a true effect of what she was doing. So there was uh, nothing on the video on Monday not, not that so suggested Monday. to you that you should immediately terminate That's her. That's correct, Your Honor. Now, on Tuesday, did you view the video? On Tuesday, my husband had come home early. The answer is either yes or no. Yes, yes, in person and on the video. Was there anything on the video on Tuesday <clears throat> that suggested that you had to terminate her employment on Tuesday? We thought that we could speak with her and work through it. Uh, Miss Early. In, Listen, in retrospect, why don't you I'm have sorry. To sit with the baby, sir. I'm sorry, Your Honor. In retrospect, I think I should have let her go on Tuesday. You yes. saw you, Miss, Mr. Yates. Yes. Can He's absolutely adorable. Right. I cannot order him to be quiet. So if he wants to play, if he wants to, you can take him outside, sir. <laughs> Miss Yates, you sound like a very intelligent person. If there was anything on that video that suggested to you that your child was in danger, you would not have gone to work on Tuesday or Wednesday. That's, I mean, if you went there to work on Wednesday. There were concerns. There were concerns. Concerns is different. Because yes. <clears throat> this is a question of paying her for the week even though you terminated her. So I'm trying to find the point in time. It's not Monday and it okay, wasn't Tuesday. it was Wednesday. All right, what happened on Wednesday? On Wednesday, she had um, left the baby on the couch. He was at the point of sitting up and rolling over. She had left the room for a good 20 minutes. At that time, the baby was sitting up, rolling over and rolling, going back and forth on the edge of the couch. Um, my husband and I were watching this tape at the end of the day and just waiting him for him to fall. Fortunately, he did not. So this was on Wednesday? That was on Wednesday. Did you go to work on Thursday? I did, ma'am. I was trying to maintain my job, yes. Miss Yates? I did. You went to work on Thursday. Correct. And you left Miss Early with the baby on Thursday. I had asked neighbors to stop in on her. And nobody Ms. did. Miss Yates? You went to work on I Thursday? I went to work on Thursday and Friday. And you went to work on yes. Friday. So 
despite the fact that you saw things that were of concern to you on the tape, you still left your child alone with her. Five days. I regret having done it, but yes, I did. And so, Your Honor, uh, every day I was very concerned and asked how everything was, you know. Miss Early. And I was Ms. Early, always she's entitled to hire you and she's sure. entitled to fire you. Sure, I understand all that. Good. So that doesn't mean you don't have to pay her. Can I see the background check, please? Please. And there's now, a copy of her I, driver's license that she submitted. She's got a fake um, social security number that she submitted to us. Right, the driver's license is um, with right her now. fake uh, AKA. Who are you? You keep wanting to stand up. Who yes. are you? I am presently, she watches my daughter. She's watched my daughter for some time now. I don't believe when they said that they asked her and she said nothing because I asked her and she told me that she had done some things when she was younger. What do you mean she told you she did some things when she was younger? What does that mean? She did some things when she was younger, living with her parents that, you know, mm -hmm. she went to court for and... Did you check on it? No, I did not. I talked to her mother. What do you mean you didn't check on it after she told you that? I spoke to her mother in Florida. Did I you... told her everything, so, you know, I wasn't holding back. And how old is the child that she babysits for for you? My daughter's five. What is your name? Valerie. Valerie what? McElroy. Miss McElroy, all I can tell you is this. If I had a young child that I was leaving alone with someone, mm -hmm. and if that person said to me, I do in fact have a criminal history. That has nothing to do with I children. Would, yes. I would certainly do more than call her mother to find out what it was. Well, I that explained would just... to her everything. That it was. You're good at and I was 18 years old, and it was. I don't regret what happened to me then. It was a wonderful learning. Well, that's that's Miss, Miss Early, you're not following what I'm saying. You're being defensive. What I'm saying to this parent of a young child is more prudent behavior, madam, would suggest to me that instead of calling her mother to find out what it was all about, you do your own background check to make sure that you have all the information. If you're leaving your most treasured possession with a stranger, then you do an independent background check. Do you understand? Yes. All right, so what you did was not enough. I mean, these things, I'm looking at the profile, and I see it is really true that, ev that the most recent arrest that you have was back in 1991, correct? December 5th, 1990 was the only time I was arrested. Mm -hmm. December 5th, 1990, yes. And I've had no other aliases. I've had no other names. I've never had a, ma a married name. I've had that name all my life. And I have been arrested December 5th, 1990. Not according to this, madam. I know for a fact I'll never forget the day. Well, there are arrests here, I will tell you, on December 7th, 1990, November 30th, 1990, November 13th, 1990. I was only arrested on December 5th. Maybe December 7th. I mean, that's... I thought I could... All February these years, 19th I've been... of 91, forged check. I was, I was still incarcerated in February for the same thing from December 5th, 1990. Judge Judy will continue in a moment. I got in trouble for drugs when I was 18. And what else? Prostitution, you are you a liar. liar. Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. Professional babysitter Leslie Early wants to be paid for her services. Maxie and Tim Yates refuse to pay because they say she lied about her criminal past. Have you ever seen this personal profile? No. Well, I would suggest you take a look at it because if it is incorrect, I suggest that what you do is you make sure that they fix it. But these yeah. things have, and I have a nice, aliens. listen to me, these things have a nice seed number. They are clearly refer to you. And if somebody is making a mistake on all of these arrests, I suggest that you deal with it. But this is the information that they got. It certainly shows more than one arrest. Okay. Take a look at it. Please. Now. Your Honor, may I say something more about that? Yes. Um, there's also, more recently, in 1986, there were also several 86 vehicles. 86 or 96? I'm sorry, uh, 96. In um, uh, 
here in, in California. She had several uh, traffic violations and had a suspended driver's license. One of our agreements was that she would drive the baby to doctor appointments. Um, that was one of the agreements that we had as part of her being a nanny for our child. And obviously she couldn't, she committed to something that she couldn't Ms. Yates, do. Ms. Yates, you have a tape with you, I see. That's correct. What is that tape going to show me? Well, what we had done is... Just tell me this, what it's going to show me. This particular tape, each day we had videotaped. The most dramatic tape was not on the final day that we fired her. I had informed her in the morning that the... What? You're not answering my question. What is that this tape? This shows of her leaving the baby on the couch and saying, don't fall off, don't fall off, and she leaves the room. And it also shows her throwing the infant into the air. Throwing the infant into the air in an, in an anger or playfully? Playfully, however, he's, he's medically fragile. She knew that going into it. We explained to him he had major surgery two and a half months before she took over but, his but care. But nothing that you're going to show me there indicates abusive behavior. You're absolutely right. Because okay. Because that had been, we had copied it over. And this just shows the vantage point that we had. It also had sound so that we could hear things that were going on through the house. There were some days, two days in particular, she let that baby cry, or a child cry, for over three hours at one time. This is not feeding what him. What day? This okay, yet. this what was day? on Wednesday and on Thursday. Thursday in particular was the worst day. She had asked to do our house. Listen to me. Okay. Miss Yates. Every time a parent has to leave a young child, especially an infant, with a stranger, there are always trepidations because you're never sure about what's going to happen. You are absolutely entitled to hire and fire the caregiver of your choice, whether you have reason or whether you don't have reason. In this case, clearly, according to you, you had just cause to let her go for the following reasons. You had tape and you weren't satisfied with her performance. And then subsequently, you received a background check which suggested to you that she was less than forthcoming with regard to what her background was. And even if you hadn't gotten this background check, according to you, you would have let her go. Is that correct? That's correct. Judge Judy is ready to rule. However, Mrs. Yates, you did allow her to remain in your employ and you went to work Tuesday after you saw the tape, Wednesday after you saw the tape, Thursday after you saw the tape, and Friday after you saw the tape. You went to work. And I assume you don't work for nothing, so you got paid, right? And you said to me, I didn't want to risk my job, right? That's absolutely correct. You have to pay her for the week she worked for you. You know what? If you honest. had, if you had let her go on Monday night mm -hmm. after you viewed the tape, she would have had absolutely no cause to complain but the fact that you <coughs> permitted her to stay with your baby for that entire week, despite the fact that you and your husband were coming home every night, right, sir? Yes. And watching the tape. It is unreasonable for you now to withhold her salary. Judgment is for the plaintiff for the amount of $250. Did she, in fact, buy food for you and lay out $7? Yes, but we had agreed at $700 a month. She had miscalculated. She said $250 a week. It was actually $175 a week. She called me to tell me that the amount was $250 on the phone. I didn't come up with that amount. I'm awarding you $257. That's fine. Great. Uh, I want to say something to you. Look at me. When you have a young child, you're supposed to be very cautious. And I'm not suggesting that Miss Early is not a good caretaker for children. I am not making that judgment here today. All I'm saying today in today's case is these people utilized her services for a week, and they have to pay her. What I'm saying to you is you may be perfectly satisfied with her as a caregiver for your five-year-old. You have to be more prudent in the process that you use for selecting a person. You're a parent, and your primary responsibility has to be to your child. So right. whether it's this lady or some other lady in the future who's going to take care of your baby, do your own background check. You don't call her mother to find out if she's a nice person. I assume that you have somebody else taking care of your baby now? My husband and I are taking care of him. We alternate. That baby is absolutely delicious. Thank you. So it may be worthwhile. Thank Good you, luck. Your Honor. Thank you. That baby is absolutely delicious. Thank you. So it may be worthwhile. Thank Good you, luck. Your Honor. Thank you. Parties are excused. You may step out. May I get a copy of this? 
All right, yeah, we'll get you a copy okay. of that. A Judge person. Judy will continue in a moment. And on the next Judge Judy. I think that they've done this before, in my opinion. And I just think that they were pulling whatever they could to try to not pay somebody. And I think you're the one that's done things before, Leslie. Okay, Maxie. Well, you're the loser today. No, I'm not a loser. Sure, we're the sure winners is. because I feel that this person has been exposed on national TV. I'm frightened for you and that she's taking knows. care of your child. I had a problem with drugs when I was 18 years old, and um, I got in trouble for drugs. When I was 18. What else? Prostitution. You are you a got liar. You pages worth You there, are Leslie. a liar. 12 pages How of forgery. Gonna... You're a liar. Felonies. Prostitution. You know what? On Tuesday. They love this. The second day of recording. Leslie, Why are we walking the house brown naked? I cried, I was devastated, and these pictures were horrible. She says the photographer got too familiar with the guests at her wedding anniversary. Here he is, doing the Macarena, right there. I wear many hats, Your Honor. He poured a beer over the top of her head, and I had a, a satin dress on, and, and it clinged to me, and it was see-through. Don't say you're sorry, just be quiet. You are about to enter the courtroom of Judge Judith Scheinlin. The people are real. The cases are real. The rulings are final. This is her courtroom. This is Judge Judy. Parties on Walters versus Rice. Step forward, please. 43-year-old Dorothy Walters says photographer Ron Rice ruined her 25th wedding anniversary because he was unprofessional, danced with the guests, and took bad pictures. Order. All rise. Yeah, this is case number 355 on the calendar. In the matter of Walters versus Rice. Parties have been sworn in, Judge. You may be seated. You are the photographer. Yes, I am, Your Honor. Mrs. Walters, you hired the defendant because you and your husband were celebrating your 25th wedding anniversary. Yes, that's right. It's lovely. Thank you. What kind of party were you having? We uh, rented the Marina Hornblower yacht, and uh, we were having a celebration cruise for our family and our friends. How many people? Um, 60. How did you find him? Uh, through an ad in the newspaper in the Daily Breeze, right here, under photo wedding photography. Okay, can I see it? Run. So you hired him? Tell me about the agreement that you made with him. Um, I searched for a photographer, and um, then I saw that ad, and I said, well, let me go check this guy's workout, because I wanted special double effects and photography. And when I went to his home to look at his uh, work, it was exceptional. I mean, it was, it was knocked down. It was just so great work. Above this, exceptions. this, this work was really good, and um, so I, without a doubt, I, I wrote him a check and I, I hired him. Was it a deposit or was it? I gave him a two hundred dollar deposit, and two weeks later, I paid him the rest in full in advance before the wedding. What was the whole price? Seven hundred fifty-two thirty-three, my contract, and that was to include what? That was to include him to come to my home uh, two and a half hours. And um, that was to include a, a bridal album with eight bikes. The pictures that he, that he showed me that of our 25th wedding anniversary were horrible. I cried. I was devastated. I mean, these pictures were horrible. The pictures that he, that he showed me that of our 25th wedding anniversary were horrible. I cried. I was devastated. I mean, these pictures were horrible. My friends took pictures with um, their regular cameras. Look at my pictures that they took with their regular cameras compared to the professional pictures that he took. I mean, it was horrible. I'm gonna, I will look yeah, at both. Yeah. Why I, do you think that happened? I have no idea. I have no, absolutely no idea. <laughs> well, you indicate in your complaint that his behavior at this function was... My sister all day... I did. <laughs> and, and, and said all kinds of... I have it on video. I have the video right here. You can see it. I have him well, dancing, doing, it? doing the Macarena, eating with my guest, poured not taking pictures. My... He poured a beer over the top of her head, made her dress see-through. I have it on video. <laughs> I would really like to see that. I wish I was there, too. <laughs> may, may I show you who he is on the video? Yeah. 
Just let. I wear many hats, Your Honor. Photographer, comedian, dancer, pourer, and beer. I hired you to be a photographer, Shh, not don't to be. Listen to me. Don't answer him. I don't... Here he is, Your You're Honor. right, Your Honor. I Here he is, doing the Macarena, right there. <laughs> and I have no. See, no. There he is, doing the Macarena there in your courtroom. Okay. It moves me. There like he is. The <laughs> <laughs> Needs a little work. <laughs> I want to see the okay. beer pouring. Other than this macarena, is there anything else on this tape? Um, it, it, it just shows Leona having the beer on her head. It didn't show him actually doing it, but you could hear him. Well, let me, sh let me see. Where, how much into the tape is that? It's a, a, a little bit farther. Would you speed it up, please, third? <laughs> Yes, Your Honor. Why did you pour a beer over this lady? Well, I haven't seen that part yet, Your Honor. I don't, I don't believe I did. Yes, well, you did. I mean, here, my mom, Miss Walters. Sure. Don't talk to him. I'm talking to him now. Absolutely sure. She, she's going to tell me, this lady, if I ask her to stand up, which I will. Yeah. Stand up now. Stand up. You're her sister? Yes. Did he pour a beer on you at this function? Yes, he did. What did he say? He, I was dancing, and he says, you need to be cooled off. And he threw the beer on top of my head. And I had a, a satin dress on, and, and it clinged to me, and it was see-through. And I was really, really embarrassed. OK, sit down. Mr. Rice. It sounds like a fun thing to do <laughs> under circumstances, but I was hired in a professional position and a capacity, and that's exactly what I did. Uh, I have on the Just a second. Yes, ma'am. I've made four or five weddings in my time. Hired a lot of photographers for other kinds of functions. Mm -hmm. I never had a photographer dancing with my guests. I never had a photographer coming and eating with my guests. I never had a photographer pouring anything over one of my guests. Otherwise, that photographer would have been brought out of the function in a box. Yes, I agree. <laughs> now, you did that. Uh, you I... were dancing with the guests, no jacket on, and, sir, I didn't see you with a camera slung around your shoulder. This was after, may I, uh, this yes. was after all the ceremonial events were done, because the, the wedding was during the day. I heard you for the Shh. whole time. That... Do I look like I need oh, help? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and so I was, I was finished. Just a second. What do you mean you, then what do you mean you were finished? I was finished with all the ceremonial events. They were partying. And they were partiers. How I many thought. rolls of film did you take, sir? Mm. Approximately 250. Uh, <gasps> How oh, many no rolls? Way. Hey. Four, Let's, four, oh. four, 220, four. medium format. How many rolls of film? Two rolls of 12 exposure, which was 24 prints, and then four at 24. So altogether, you had how many pictures? Four times 24 <laughs> times 20. Me and my math. Uh, probably 150, approximately. 96 and, uh, and 24 is 120. Okay. So you had 120 pictures. Let me see them. <laughs> the irony of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Judge Judy will continue in a moment. That's 99% <laughs> of the profession is being able to mesh and flow and get into the party mood. Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. Dorothy Walters is suing photographer Ron Rice for taking bad pictures and being unprofessional at her 25th wedding anniversary. He says the pictures are good and that he was just enjoying himself. 120 pictures. Right. Let me see them. <laughs> the irony of this thing <laughs> is I, I saw her... She didn't want... I was supposed to give her the 5x5 five five proof. Just a second. She didn't even want them. Listen to I me. Mean, you Mr. Rice right to me. Miss Walters. Okay. He wouldn't... Mr. <coughs> Miss Walters. Where are the 120 in prints? In the trash. Okay. Who put them in the trash? Two weeks ago, before she served me the notice, I said, look, at here's Barbara's... I'm Dorothy. She'll, Dorothy. Just a second. Whomever. Uh, Dorothy, I'm sorry. So the answer is, you don't have them. You threw them away. I have the negatives. Just a second. I was going to... 
You have the negatives of 120 pictures? All Let right. me have them. All right. All right, yes, sir. Shall I? No, don't come too close to me, Mr. Rex. <laughs> <laughs> And here's a, Your Honor, you, would you want to show me? Just a me minute. That? What's the difference between these and these, sir? Print quality and definition. One's two and a quarter format. Those are 35 millimeter format. The other one is uh, six by six millimeter. Those are table shots. So you want to do a wedding, uh, all the ceremonial events, all the romant romantics, anything that has to do with you know, the principles of the wedding party yeah. are shot in, with the two and a quarter. The and, and this is two and a quarter? No, that's 35 millimeter. That's where table shots, guest shots. Uh, there are no table shots here, sir. Maybe, can I see that? No. Okay. <laughs> and all these negatives are the negatives, right? Those are the negatives of, yes. Bird. Would you count up these? Sure. These negatives? No problem. Thank you. I just want to know how much, how many they are, because she says that look, make sure limited there are number too. of rows. Now, let me take a look at the pictures. Okay, Bert. These are the ones he, he took. Here's the identical <laughs> pictures that the guest took. With the polarizer. No, this is with that, that, this. Who's, who's no, the professional here? Hey, I, yeah, who's I, the professional? Look at those pictures. Oh, one, those one two, three, and then you're both out of here. Do you understand? And if you're out of here, you lose. Do you understand? Good. Oh, now, these are the ones your guests took. Yes. And these are the ones that you're complaining about that he took. Yes. Are these the only pictures that you were given by him? Uh, no, I was given another book. Where and is it? Where are the... You have it. You wouldn't give uh, it to me. Where are didn't, the what words didn't you both understand? Don't talk to each other. I don't like to have to raise my voice. I want to see the photographs that he took at your house. Do you have those? He, no. He, he, he didn't bring them. Don't, don't he, speak. Your Honor, he took them. He would not give them back to me because I said these are unacceptable. And, and he, he took them. He wouldn't give them back to Just me. Just a second. So are you telling me that these are That's the only, the only pictures Shh, I have? Can I finish my okay. question? I'm sorry. Are these the only pictures that you have of your wedding anniversary that he party took. Yes. that he took? Yes, they are. She just perjured herself. You just threw Check the up. book away. He, th he threw the book away. That's what he told you. Okay, I'm sorry. Show me, sir, what you say she has in addition to these. She has 34 8 by 10s that she ordered from the prince. Show she me the order with her signature on it. Right here? Good. Can I see it, please? She got her plan. I mean, it's a very flexible plan. She got plan three. Sir. Oh, yes, Your Honor. Stop talking. This is the contract. This is not her order. Absolutely right. Show. I'm sorry. I, uh, don't, say, don't say you're sorry. Just be quiet. Okay. This is not an order. This is the contract. Is it like a price list or anything in there like that other than just the negatives? How no. many were there? 70, Judge. All right. Now listen to me, sir. Yes, Your Honor. Listen carefully. There are 70 negatives here. 7 0. Right. You, uh, you wouldn't dispute that with Bird, would you? Oh, no. Bird. <laughs> now. Not Bird. This is. It's probably a 36 roll, Your Honor. So, altogether, you took 106 pictures, not 150. Well, actually, uh, with the 70 pictures, it was more than enough because what she had ordered was just those elect, professionally looking, beautiful few, if I may add. Mr. Rice, I asked you a question, and you will not deflect me Sorry. with your palaver. Where is her order for these 8 by 10s that you just told me about? What, I mean, they're, they're right there. They're right on those Mac cards. Well, show me her signature on those yeah. things, sir. No, there's sir. no signature. The show contract... Show Officer Bird. Show, give him the whole envelope, Bird. Please. Uh, help. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There was no album. She ordered $252 worth tax... I mean, she ordered... Where are the 10 by 10s? You that have she, them. Where are they? 
I mean, you have All right, now, it. let me tell you what happens it's like, when well, you don't it. listen four times. Four times you don't listen. Judge Judy will continue in a moment. It's wearing hats, uh, not just being a professional, being oh stuffy. Oh, my God. You have, to, you have to have personality. You have to you know, go on with a smile. And later today... If I give you $200, you have to give me the camcorder back. No, I don't have to. It's yes. mine. I it's mine. It belongs to You're me. You're full of it. Real cases. Real people. Judge Judy. Dorothy Walters wants the money back she paid photographer Ron Rice because she says the pictures were unprofessional. Mr. Rice, yes, I find that based upon what I've seen in the photographs, what I've heard today, that your conduct on the day of this anniversary party was less than professional and certainly less than what Miss Walters bargained for when she retained you. So. You're going to refund to her $752.33 because, because of you, she doesn't have what she bargained for, which was a professional photographer who behaved in a professional manner, who furnished her professional pictures. And in addition, since you told me that the proofs that you gave her, you took and threw in the garbage, which means that you certainly didn't want them, Miss Walters, I'm giving you all the negatives. All right. Thank you. Oh, That's thank all. You. They're no good anyway. They're no good. You said they were professional I mean, photographers. You don't want them. Bodies are excused. You I may can... step out. You said they were good. Bodies are excused. You may step out. They're also for the They're no good. Step out yeah, the back door no to your right. It's wearing hats, uh, not just being a professional, being oh stuffy. Oh, my God. 99% <laughs> of the profession is being able to mesh and flow and get into the party mood. Give you, me a kiss. Ruined. Give me a hug. Come on. He's yeah. not. I give him a He's hug. He's not. Whoa. He's not. <laughs> well, I mean, it's like I was born that way. What's your excuse? And now the next case. Party's on Hill versus Mathis. Step forward, please. 32-year-old Robin Hill is suing her former sister-in-law, Teresa Mathis, age 36, because she won't return her video camera. Do I understand this correctly, that you two ladies are sister-in-laws or in some way related? Still sister-in-laws? Um, I'm unsure of it. They got divorced. I don't know. <laughs> okay. You divorced? Right. From her brother? Yes. So you're former sister-in-laws? Correct. Let me understand this. You needed $200 for some sort of move a couple of years ago. Right. You asked your sister-in-law, who I assume was then still married to your brother. Correct. For the $200. According to you, she lent you the $200, and you gave her your camcorder. Correct. As sort of insurance for the repayment of this loan. Right. Now you're suing her because you say you went back and retrieved the camcorder, and it's broken. Right. And the camcorder, you paid how much for? Um, it was on sale. We paid roughly $900. So you're suing her for $500. Which would the about replacement cost of it. And you say nothing could be farther from the truth no. that you bought the camera. I purchased the camera because she was going to Oklahoma for $200 and I told her that if she got the money back, um, as soon as she got it, that I, could, I would sell it back to her if she wanted. And for that, the $200? Right, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. How did you get the camcorder back? Um, she asked me to house it for her while they were in Oklahoma with bicycle races for their son. And a friend of mine had asked me to film How some stuff. How long ago was this? This was November of last year. So November of last year, when you were house-sitting, you got your camcorder back. Well, I went to borrow it to use it to film some stuff, and it didn't work. So I went to put it in a shop. They had a fit and told me, though, they wanted to get it fixed. I said, fine. So I gave it back to them to get it fixed. Mm -hmm. And I was more than willing to give them their money back. And if it was my fault that it was broke, then I would have paid for it. But it was working when they got it, and I don't think I should have to pay for it to be fixed. Did you give her back the $200? I've offered it to her. Just a second. No. Did you give her back the $200? No. She refused it. No, that's not true. <coughs> that is true. It's not true. That is true. Um, when I asked for the money, she didn't have it. She never had the money. The only reason she came to my house and took the camera while we were gone out of my closet was because she needed money and she wanted to sell it <sighs> and then um, had planned to pay me after she sold the camera. Um, when I purchased the camera, it was working just not properly. Um, you can see by the um, film that I brought that it has lines in it. Um, and that was in April of 95 at a national that we went to, my son's bike races. That's Whatever. So you case. went and you had it fixed. I, when I got the money, because I was single, my um, ex-husband and I were divorced. I have three children and a large house payment. So when I did get the money, which was in March, 
um, I said, this is terrible. You know, I have this camera. I can't even use it. It doesn't work right. So I took it down. Um, her aunt was with me also at the races when I purchased the camera, and it kept shutting off. She was standing beside me, and we were taping um, our children. Her All right, if you don't races. have to go into a whole long thing, it's not a very difficult case. Okay. Judge Judy is ready to rule. Ms. Hill, yes. if I believe your story, she lent you $200, you gave her the camera until you paid her back the $200. Correct. You never paid her back the $200. Where's the camera now? She still has the I camera. I've never Perfect. lost the camera. Perfect. I still have it. Camera's yours. Right. When she gives you back the $200, um, you just listen to me. Okay. When she gives you back the $200, you'll give her back the camera. Right now, you didn't give her back the $200, so the camera's hers. That's very simple. I understand that, Your Honor. Good. That's all. Case is dismissed. All right, sorry, excuse me. You may step out. Judge Judy will continue in a moment. And on the next Judge Judy. I've got notarized statements saying it was working. It worked. But it didn't work right. <laughs> That's not my fault. <laughs> well, it's not my fault. You hauled well, it in your car all the way to Oklahoma since 1991, right. all over the place. That's you're what right. happened. Well, that's not my fault. If I give you $200, you have to give me the camcorder back. No, I don't have to. It's yes. mine. I pr it's mine. It belongs to You're me. You're full of it. Dog and he bit me. Did you pull his ears? Neighbors fight over who should pay for the scars left by a dog bite. What happened to you in the hospital? The doctor put me some stitches. Your face is beautiful. It's gonna be gorgeous. People aren't gonna look at that. They're gonna look at your gorgeous eyes. You are about to enter the courtroom of Judge Judith Scheinlin. The people are real. The cases are real. The rulings are final. This is her courtroom. This is Judge Judy. Parties on Mata versus Soria. Step forward, please. 30-year-old mother, Micheline Matar, says her 8-year-old daughter, Veronica, was bitten on the face by Maria Soria's dog, Pebbles, and is suing for the medical bills. Order. All rise. Quiet in the courtroom, please. All rise. Now, this is case number 327 on the calendar in the matter of Matar versus Soria. Parties have been sworn in, Your Honor. You may be seated. Have a seat. You pronounce your name Matar? Matar, yes. Miss Matar, this is your little girl? Yes. And according to your complaint, she was playing at a friend's house with your children. Yes. And that, uh, unfortunately, she was bitten by your dog. Yes. This dog. And you seek reimbursement for your medical bills. Yes, please. There is no dispute that your dog bit her and scratched her. Is that right? Right. There is no dispute as to that, no. Well, then why don't you tell me why you don't believe you're responsible for the child's medical bills? First of all, Your Honor, my dog, he's, he's really good. Um, he, just, he always has a problem with sensitive ears. And when the children started coming over, you know, I make sure, and I told him, you know, it's, the dog is fine, just don't pull his ears. Because he'll react, he reacts to adults, he reacts to us. It's a problem that he's had since he was a puppy. He's now six years old. Okay. So, that I found interesting in your answer. You said that the dog has had a problem with his ears mm -hmm. since he was a puppy. Mm -hmm. Tell me what kind of problem. You know, it's... It's really hard for me to tell you. I I taken him to the to the vet, and he says, "Well, he just has sensitive ears. There is nothing wrong with him inside that he can see. That's physical. It's just a sensitivity that he has." Well, what has the dog done? He hasn't done anything to anybody before. What he's done, and my daughter can probably show you, is if you grab his ears and try to extend them, he tries to move, you know, kind of bite off your hand off his ears. So he tries to bite off your hand yeah, to let... because he is not comfortable with that. 
And that was something that I explained to the children, not only when they first started visiting, but every single time that they went to play with the dog. I say, you can play with him, you can pet him anywhere you want, just don't pull his ears. He's fine if you just, you know, touch him down, but if you extend him, he has a problem with that. Hi. Hi. Veronica, can you tell me about the day that you went and played in the house where that dog was? First, I went to my friend Christy's house. Is that their house? How old is Christy? Eight. Eight. And how old are you? Eight. Okay, sit still. Okay? So you went to play at the house, and what happened? I pet the dog, and he bit me. Where did you pet him? On the head. Did you pull his ears? Hmm? You sure? You just went to pet him. Had you played with the dog before? Dog never bit you before. Where were you bitten, Veronica? Over here and that. Right over here where that mark is? Did it hurt? Did you have to go to the doctor? The hmm? hospital. What happened to you in the hospital? The doctor put me some stitches. Do you know how many stitches you had? And how long ago did this happen? Mm. A while ago? You know, my eyes aren't so good anymore. So I need these glasses to really get a good look at, you know, your face, because your face is beautiful. Right? Just had that little mark on it, so let me see. Oh, it's going to be gorgeous. People aren't going to look at that. They're going to look at your gorgeous eyes. Right? <laughs> I'm telling you. OK. Why don't you go sit down? Are you, you feel better about going to sit down? Yes? OK. Heard? Sure. OK. Is there anything else you want to tell me? It just It's obvious that it was in her house. It's her dog. And if she knows that he has a problem, keep him away from children. Don't give the responsibility for eight-year-old to know what she has to do. <clears throat> and and I, I understand what you're saying. The point, too, is that the responsibility of having a dog is, is almost, you know, you, the, the words that your husband told me was, well, what kind of people are you to have a dog? Well, I'm sorry. Miss Soria, listen to me. You know, at, things get hot when you're in the middle of a dispute. I think that sometimes animals are unpredictable. And even though an animal has not done anything in the past, you never can tell when something is going to trigger some sort of aberrant behavior, like biting a child. Your dog, while you tell me that he has not bitten anybody before, clearly had a problem with his ears. Now, according to the child, the child was not pulling his ears straight out, which is what you say causes him to mm -hmm. act out that way. Mm -hmm. According to this little girl, that didn't happen. But clearly, someone is responsible minimally for the medical bills that these people incurred. Can I see your medical bills? Because as between this lady and you, it was within your home that this happened. So somebody is going to be financially damaged, and I'm not talking about the little mark that's on your daughter's face. That's going to go away, hopefully. Well, and I have a report from a doctor that will scar for forever. Well, She has two scars on her face, one on her cheek, one under her nose. I just want to know what the bill was so far. We paid $2,500 cash for the plastic surgeon to do her face. Okay. Judge Judy continues in a moment. You know he has a problem. Lock him outside. But you know, if you, you had don't a free little, little girl, we didn't life. know he had a problem. Thank you for the nice words. That shows what kind of people you are. And later today. I mean, talk about losers. Yeah. You know, when you hang around with losers, you know what you become? <laughs> a loser. <laughs> right. Real cases, real people. Judge Judy.
Micheline Matar's eight-year-old daughter, Veronica, was bitten on the face by Maria Soria's dog, Pebbles, and is suing for the medical bills. Maria claims she told Veronica not to touch Pebbles on her ears, but she didn't listen. Mrs. Matar, I'm going to come to you. You seem like an intelligent lady. <coughs> Thank you. And I'm sure that you knew that these people had a dog in their house. And an intelligent person also knows that when little children are around a dog, something can happen. Now, I'm not saying that you are responsible, but you clearly knew that they had a dog, right? Things can happen anywhere you go. Thank you. Right. That's my right. point, too. When a dog bites somebody, regardless of where, when, and how, it usually becomes the owners of the dog's responsibility. It's almost a relativity here as to, okay, so by default, you know. No, Miss Soria, you're missing the point, madam. The point is that you were A, aware of the fact that your dog had a problem. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Did you ever tell that to Mrs. Matar? No. Well, you see, that's a responsibility that you have. Because then Mrs. Matar would have been on notice. And she would have known that what you knew about your dog, that your dog had a certain sensitivity. And then I would say, well, she assumed the risk if she let her children go to your house to play. You can't say that I'm telling an eight-year-old and therefore I've com completely absolved myself of responsibility. If you told the mother, and after you told the mother, she said, dog looks perfectly fine to me, I'm going to let my children go over there, then she is, in at least part, in part, negligent. You would agree with that, right? Yes, I do. But you didn't tell her. And that was a mistake. Telling the children is not telling her. Now, they have medical bills now of $2,500. Somebody's got to pay for that. You had the knowledge about your dog. She did not. So you have to pay these medical bills. And the judgment is for the plaintiff in the amount of $2,500. That's all. What Body's about eggs. the scars? I'm sorry, Your Honor. What about the other charges that I have to do another surgery for her to take out all the scars on her face. Let me tell you something. Right now, to date, your medical bills are $2,500. Okay. Right? If you have additional medical bills, there are notice they may be responsible. It may be that as your daughter gets older, this little mark that's right over here is going to fade. I spoke to a specialist, which she you told may me that it have will spoken not. to a specialist, but I'm telling you, as your daughter gets older, she's still a little child. Her face is going to grow, her skin is going to grow, and what looks like a quarter of an inch scar now, maybe nothing more than a dot later on, and you as a responsible parent might not want to put your child through an additional surgical procedure. So right now I'm giving you your medical bills to date, which are $2,500. Now you have to know, Ms. Matar also, if you allow your children to go next door to a neighbor to play and the neighbor has a dog, a little dog like this, that looks perfectly harmless. There is always that risk. I don't think that there was anything malevolent about what the defendant did. I mean, according to what she tells me, the dog has never bitten anybody else. But you have a responsibility to tell the parents, not the children, of people that come into your house, that this dog has now bitten one child. Because the next time, if this happens to somebody else, you are responsible for punitive damages. Do you understand? I understand. That's all. Why is that excuse? You may step out. Bad to you, right? You know he has a problem. Lock him outside. But you know, if you, you had don't a ruin a little girl's We didn't life. know he had a problem. Thank you for the nice words. That shows what kind of people you are. Yeah, well, you did oh, not have yeah, a mother to call to ask how the, my daughter was. And now the next case. Parties on Flubaca versus Five. Step forward, please. 20-year-old student Renata Flubacher says she bailed 19-year-old Courtney Fye's boyfriend out of jail twice and has not been paid back. The defendant was a friend of yours, according to your complaint. She had had some trouble with her mate. Mm -hmm. Correct. Some domestic violence, is that right? Mm-hmm. You had him arrested? Yes, I did. And then you thought better of it? Yes. So you called your friend and asked her to bail him out of jail? Yes. And what did you say? 
Um, I was unsure of it at first. Um, I didn't know the procedures of what the law meant and what exactly. At first it was just that she needed to borrow the money and then it ended up she needed a co-signer which was a lot more because I didn't know the gentleman and of course what I knew of him was all negative because of what You mean happened. the gentleman that she lives with? Well, the, her boyfriend Her does. boyfriend. Mm -hmm. So how much did you spend the first time to bail him out of jail? Um, I think it was $325 after all the co court fines. And you borrowed that money from her? Yes. You promised to pay her back? Yes, I did. And you haven't? No, I haven't had a chance. How long ago was this? It was in May, I think. Now then he got himself arrested again. Right. He got, he got on probation and then was arrested for the same thing, pretty much, from what my understanding is. Not on her, but on somebody else. He sounds like a real charmer. <laughs> Judge Judy continues in a moment. She was my best friend, and we don't talk anymore. Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. Renata Flubacher says she bailed Courtney Fye's boyfriend out of jail twice and is suing Courtney to get the money back. Courtney feels it's her boyfriend's debt. What was he arrested for the second time? Um, assault. On whom? Some guy. I don't know some guy he fought with. And what happened? Um, he had called me from jail and was crying and telling me that he respected me and that um, one of the main problems with Courtney and I was that um, he wouldn't let me see Courtney. He said that my friendship with her, that I had bad influences This is Courtney? On her. Yes. So that I had bad influences on her. I've known her since sixth grade and he pretty much told Courtney who she could and could not see and he pretty much was just apologizing and saying that you know if I got him out again that things would be different and that she could see me because when I got him out the first time I n pretty much didn't speak to Courtney again you know I didn't hear from her she was at his house I would call there he would get upset with her yell at her tell her you need to tell that girl to quit calling here and I mean this is after the, after you, I bailed him out after of jail. you bailed him out so he pretty much just begged me, and then he started saying some things about um, if his probation officer found out that he had violated his probation, he would go to jail for six years. And he was like, I'm going to go to jail, and I'm going to go to jail for something I don't deserve, and something like that. So I called Courtney, and I was like, you know, Courtney, is this true? And from what she understood, it was all true. And I was like, what do you want me to do? Do you have another way to get him out? You know, do you need the money? She, put him, she was like, yeah, I need the money, and I can't live without him, and I need him to be out of jail. And did you say that to her? I did say that. You couldn't live without him? Well, I, love, I did love him very much. Sounds like a manipulative sucker. Yeah. Well, at first, he wasn't like that, but... So how much did it cost you the second time? Um, it was $325 again. And this time with a lot more riding his, because um, I had to um, <coughs> co-sign also again, because neither one of them know anybody who has any type of liability. And it was a lot more money this time if he didn't end up going back to court. Did he go back to court? No, he didn't. I ended up having to call bounty hunters on him to pick him up. He, um, he was supposed to go to court, and Courtney and him got in a really big fight within a week or something. I, something blew up, and he was staying at his other girlfriend's house, and we had to call the cops, and we um, mm -hmm. they had to do all this stuff. And the bounty hunters came and picked him up and had to take him to court, and then he got put back in jail. So how much did the whole exercise cost you? It was a little over $900. All right, Courtney, let me hear your defense to this. Um, well, I believe that I owe her for bailing him out the first time, but I didn't ask her to bail him out the second time. And he's the one that asked her, so I think that she should be suing him for the rest. Well, she did, in fact, call you yes. after she got this and I jailhouse her, call. Yes, and I told her if she wanted to do it, to do it, that I, that I would like her to do it, but I wasn't asking her to do it. You said, I'm not asking you to do it, or did you say, I love him and I can't live without well, I, him? Yeah, I said that, but I'm not asking you to bail him out. She did say that, too. She was like, she's like, well, I'm not asking you. I'm just, she, she said something like, I'm not asking you because I know you've already done this once and I know I already owe you money, but I love him so much <laughs> and I can't live without him, you know? And I was just like, okay, so do I you want me to leave him in jail or do you want me to get him out of jail? You know, this is up to you. And I told her straight out, I was like, you owe me this money. I can't stand, I don't like what he does to you. I don't like the way he treats you. I don't like the way he treats me as somebody who's helping him. And did you say that to her when you spoke to her on the phone? Yes, I did. And I mean, I went, did you we say went together to the bonds place, and I was like, Courtney, this is a lot of money. I was like, I've worked so hard for all this money. And what kind have. of work do you do? Um, I'm a waitress and a full-time student. 
and I've been saving all my life. I was like, this is my savings, and you know, you will pay me back this money. When did Prince Charming finally leave the picture? Um, about a month ago. Under what circumstances? I just couldn't take it anymore. And he's and, going back to and jail. And he's actually, he's actually wanted again. And I'm trying to help his aunt out because she's going to have to put up $14,000 if he doesn't turn himself in. So I'm helping her. You mean he got somebody else to put up bail oh, for Oh, yeah, him? his aunt And he didn't show up. And, and he hasn't showed up. And he he's... Now he's, I'm the only one that he calls, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to set him up. Let so. me tell you what you should try to do. Change your number. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, talk about losers. Yeah. You know, when you hang around with losers, you know what you become? <laughs> a loser. <laughs> right. Judge Judy continues in a moment. I believe the plaintiff when she says she couldn't stand your boyfriend. Sounds to me as if she had good cause. He tried to come between the two of you. He's clearly abusive. He's unreliable. And yet, because of your friendship, she bailed him out of jail. Big mistake. Don't do it again. Yeah. I'm sure you won't. You know, you're a hardworking gal, and if you have been diligent about saving your money, save it. <laughs> you, you know, bailing him out is like taking the money and throwing it down the sewer. But there is no question that I believe that you assured her on both occasions that you would be responsible for this money because she was not relying on the boyfriend to pay her back. She was relying on you to pay her back. If your lawsuit seeks $800, you have to pay her. It's the right thing to do. Okay? okay. Judgment in this case is for the plaintiff in the amount of $800. Thank you. Part is our excuse. You may step out. Judge Judy continues in a moment. And on the next Judge Judy. He's very violent. He's, um, I wouldn't, I don't know how many times he's hit her and stuff, but he's very verbally abusive. Many times when I've called there, he's calling her names. I was really confused. I did, you know, I've known her pretty much all my life, and I was like, what is she doing with this guy? And, and then two days later, she said that she was still in love with him, and I was confused. She was my best friend, and we don't talk anymore. <laughs> always come up to me and start saying how he needs a real good woman. They worked together, and when she got fired, his car got keyed. Well, what makes you think he had you fired? Because I wrote him a note saying that he had a bad attitude. I would always tell him all the time, you have a bad attitude. Maybe that's why you're by yourself. I took that note and I showed it to her boss. And they fired her. Pretty sure they did. You are about to enter the courtroom of Judge Judith Scheinlin. The people are real. The cases are real. The rulings are final. This is her courtroom. This is Judge Judy. Bodies on Davis versus Golden. Step forward, please. 32-year-old sales representative Fred Davis claims his former co-worker, Kendall Golden, deliberately keyed his car after she was fired from her job. Order. All rise. Yeah, this is case number 373 on the calendar in the matter of Davis versus Golden. Parties have been sworn in, Judge. You may be seated, sir. Yeah. Mr. Davis, you and Ms. Golden had been co-workers, and you claim in your complaint that she purposely keyed your car, scratched it. Scratched it, yes, ma'am. She says she didn't do it. So let me hear about why she would scratch your car. Did you see her scratch your car? Uh, yes, I have a witness that's seen her scratch my car. Well, first tell me why you think she would want to scratch your car. Well, um, we uh, were co-worker at one time, and um, Ms. Golden is primarily, primarily responsible for answering phone and data entry. Um, her business, as far as uh, with my company, is strictly up front, uh, answering phones and data entry. Uh, she has no business in the back of the warehouse, at the particular time when she was seen in the back of our warehouse at all, period. Why would she want to key your car, sir? Um, I have no idea. She felt that I had some sort of attitude towards her, which I did not. What caused you to leave the job? It was um, through a temporary assignment, and um, I got canned because of Fred Davis. So you were fired because of him? Yeah. Why? 
um, we weren't talking previously before I worked there. And as the months went on, he finally, you know, said good morning because he was the type of person that would walk by you and wouldn't say good morning. He had a major attitude. And so one morning he approached me and we began talking. And he would always come up to me and start saying how he needs a real good woman and how he's lonely and he wants to know if I had any homegirls or friends I could set him up with. Homegirls? Yeah, that's what he said. That was his words. Do you have any homegirls that I could set you up with? So finally I introduced him to my friend Bridget, who's a good friend of mine. And um, they went out at a club and um, she can tell you basically what kind of person he was with the attitude. And they didn't get along, so I guess he felt since their relationship didn't work out that I would have some reason to do something. Well, what makes you think he had you fired? Because I wrote him a note saying that he had a bad attitude. I would always tell him all the time, you have a bad attitude. Maybe that's why you're by yourself. And so I wrote him a note because one morning he wouldn't talk to me when I was asking him. So I wrote a note and said, you, you have an attitude problem. That's why you're by yourself. And he showed it to my boss. Did you and show this note to your boss? Yes, ma'am, I did. Here's the note right here. Why did you show the note to your boss? Um, I have no idea what um, her intentions were. She seemed like uh, she was upset about something. I have no idea what, it, what that might be. Um, just so that I don't have any kind of confrontation and everything is out in the open, I took that note and I showed it to her boss. Her boss said, um, well, we're not happy with her performance. And uh, just hang tight. Don't say anything to her. Just leave her completely alone. Don't have any kind of uh, talkings or dealings with her. And, uh, and they fired her. Um, I knew already prior to me leaving that Friday that my assignment was over. So it wasn't like, um, you know, because I didn't want to be there because it was only part time and the agency was finding me more. All right, hours. now this note was written on the 17th of November? Uh, yes, right around that time. Yes. When was your car keyed? Uh, the 21st of November. Were you still working there? Yeah, that was my last day of work that Friday. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And you didn't see her key your car? Uh, no, ma'am, I did not. But you say you have a witness who did see her key your yes, car? Yes, I do. Is that witness here? Yes, he is right here. Step up, sir. Tell me your name. Uh, my name is uh, Salvador Vasquez. Mr. Vasquez, do you work at the same place that these people no, work? No, I don't. Where I, do you work? I work uh, behind his company. Um, and um, I was um, around the area on um, a lunchtime. I get off at 11.45 to 12.30. And um, <laughs> I saw this lady around the time pacing uh, in the back of the, um, his warehouse like uh, three or four times and she decided to walk around to his car but I didn't see her doing it but I saw her around there and then she left I have so just a second so you um, didn't see her do well, anything except be there be there around his car did you see her do any hand motions or did you just see her there I saw her there that's it I have something yeah. yes can you tell me what time he said that happened you said it was lunchtime. Like around, it was around, I get off 11.45, 12, 30, but she was around there around 12. Okay, because at this time, I usually go relieve the um, receptionist from the switchboard from 12 to 1. So I was at the front desk relieving her for lunch when that happened. Do you have a car parked in that lot? Um, no, I park my car in front of the building because they have parking for the employees, and I just decided to park on the street for the whole entire four months that I was there. Had you ever seen her before? No, that was the first time I saw her then. How did you identify her? Well, she was like, uh, her hair, like, you know, like, down, tight, and then uh, she was wearing, like, a sweater and then something black, like a skirt. I was seeing her, like, uh, looking back and forth, walking around for a while. But, so... Uh, I didn't know what she was looking for. Did you see her face? Yeah, I did. But she, like, you know, a round face, black, you know. <laughs> can... Mm -hmm. When was the next time you saw her? No, that was the, last, the first and last time I saw her. Now, if you look at her now, is this the same lady that you saw? Are you positive of that? Yeah, I'm positive. <clears throat> now, I want you to look at her. Are you positive that this is the same lady that you saw? You don't know. She know just, sir, yes. very important. Yes. As you're standing here today, you're looking at the defendant. Is this the same person? that you saw in the parking lot that day? Yes, ma'am. You sure about that? Yes. And, and I have, that was um, on a Friday, which was casual day, so I wouldn't go to work with skirt and a sweater on. I had on just jeans and a regular old blouse because it was casual day. <clears throat> How do you remember that? Because it was the last day of my job. I mean, I was hurt. 
I remember the day I have a son to raise. I count all my pennies, believe me. Judge Judy will continue in a moment. You have a major attitude. That was what this was all about, setting you up with somebody. Obviously, you can see <laughs> who's got the attitude. And later today... How long did you go out with Mr. Charmer over here? Not one day. Not one day? You didn't go out with him at all? Well, I did, but it was a mistake. Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. Fred Davis says former co-worker Kendall Golden damaged his BMW after she was fired from her job. Miss Golden, this man has no axe to grind. He's not a friend. You're not a friend of his, oh, are I'm you? Not. He's just a civilian witness. Mm -hmm. And this clearly, you understand, Mr. Davis, is a case of circumstantial evidence. Yes, ma'am. You understand that? Yes, ma'am. You had the opportunity. Based upon what you've both told me today, you certainly had the inclination because you think he was responsible for getting you fired. No. Okay. Oh, sure. That you seem to indicate that yeah. here, that he, and you indicated yeah. that to me. But that was brought on, too, by him. Kept bu bugging me, constantly Whatever it was, asking me. You th what? thought that he was getting you fired. This was your last day of work. You just told me that you had no reason to be in the back parking lot no. because you park your car in the front, mm -hmm. right? And I have an independent witness who saw you going back and forth in the back parking lot and around That's his car. <laughs> I don't even know where his car was. I don't even, you know. I was at the switchboard. I didn't go outside, but one time uh, to the I'm warehouse. I'm not so sure about that. Let me see the damage to your car. Here's the estimate, and here is the, the pictures of my vehicle. I mean, I have no reason to do anything like that. Sure you did. I do? Sure you did. <laughs> you absolutely did because you uh, were leaving a job. It was your last day. But I knew already you prior to that. No. Oh, yeah. I, st I was in good standing with the company. The um, boss bought me lunch that day. He told me I can use him as a recommendation because I did good work for their company. So I left in good spirits. So I got along well with everybody. And that was it. Mm -hmm. I never got into any altercations at all with anybody there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you one more time, sir. Yes, ma'am. Is there any question in your mind that this is the lady that you saw? No, no question at all. No question at all? No. Judgment in this case is for the plaintiff in the amount of $1,054.12, the amount of your estimate. Thank you. That's all. Excuse, you may step out. Out the back door to your right, please. I'm not one to uh, to point the finger unless yes, I you feel. Yes, you have a major attitude, and that was what this was all about. Setting you up with somebody. Obviously, you can see <laughs> who's got the attitude. Well. I have not said nothing, but you know, stated my case, and that's it. And now the next case. Parties on Guerrero versus Monroy. Step forward, please. 18-year-old telemarketer Mayolo Guerrero says his co-worker, 22-year-old David Monroy, assaulted him, breaking his jaw. David Monroy says Mayolo attacked him. Mr. Guerrero, you claim that the defendant, who was a former co-worker of yours, assaulted you and fractured your jaw. Is that right? Yes, Your Honor. He says that he just got in the first punch. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. So why don't you start at the beginning, Mr. Guerrero, and tell me what happened. Well, what all happened is uh, a couple of months ago, uh, the defendant was dating my sister, my twin sister, and uh, they were dating for a couple of months. Could and you speak up, sir? After, having... after a while, she didn't like the way, I guess, the way he was treating her, and one night uh, they had a discussion, and she uh, told him she didn't want to talk to him no more, and she hung up on him. Um, he called back, I guess, later, on, a couple of minutes later, I guess he was mad. And uh, I picked up the phone, and he said, uh, if he could speak with my sister, well, I, I, I replied that she didn't want to speak with him. And uh, it was better if he didn't call no more. So uh, he got mad, and uh, he was uh, pretty good friends with one of uh, the managers of the place where we worked at. So you both worked in the same place? Yes, we did. What kind of work did you do? Uh, for a home improvement company. What kind of work did you do? Uh, marketing, telemarketing. Just telemarketing, marketing, just... Marketing? Yeah, marketing. On the phone? Yeah. Okay. 
You and, call uh, people and try to con convince them to have their home improved. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And um, not try. After that, um, he was pretty good friends with, with with the manager, the office manager there, and uh, I guess he got mad because of the incident. He he got him to lay me off. So I got laid off. After that, I. Uh, I went somewhere else, right? Looked for another job. A week later, I, retur I returned to the office to uh, pick up a check for a sale that I had made. And uh, when I finished, you know, talking to the office manager, um, as I was leaving the office, Mr. Monroy approached me, and uh, he asked me if he could if he could talk with me for a couple of seconds. So I said, Yeah, it was fine. We were walking out, and as um, he was he was on my left side walking, and all of a sudden we got to a hall, and as we got to the hall, he came behind me and. Out of nowhere, he hit me on the, my right side here. I then fell down. I hit my head against the wall. And then he, uh, he yelled something about, I've never done something, something about how he never did anything to me. And then he took off. I went to the hospital to see if anything was wrong with it. And they checked it out. And they said it was fractured. And I was in there, for, I was in there overnight for two days. I, you know, I couldn't you know, return to work because my job was wired shut for three weeks. I'll look at your medical bills in a minute. Okay, so let me hear your version of what happened. <clears throat> Over here. Well, what happened was uh, that I used to work at a, I, we used to work at a different company before, and then I went to a, this other company, and I decided to get him a job over there because I was trying to help the guy out, whatever. And uh, I was seeing his sister, but I was seeing other females as well, you know what I'm saying, and I kept that all open. And he didn't like that because he'd hear about my stories and da-da-da. And, uh, no, 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 and, uh, not yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're not watching Seinfeld, sir. This is a court. Yeah, yeah. All right? I mean, so, all right. <laughs> no, Mr. Anyway, Monroy, so Mr. Monroy try not to speak over me. <clears throat> you were dating his sister. Mm hmm And what you're saying to me is that at work, when you were working together, you were talking to him about other women that you were dating, too. No, I wasn't. I didn't say that. Well, what I were you saying? I said I was talking about other females, and he overheard me. He heard me, you know, and telling other people that I work with, you know, just my dates or whatever. You know, I just, you know, go out on a date. And anyway, he uh, didn't take that too well, so um, he would just start talking, you know, what bad about me. Just saying bad things, you know what I'm saying? Just some rude things that, you know. Let me get, give me an example. It's just... Things piss me off, you know, just whatever, you know, all, you know, just things, you know what I'm saying? I can't ex sit here and tell you all oh, exactly. He said this right. and that because I wrote it down, you know what I'm saying? No, I didn't write it down. I mean, this is what I told him. I said, you keep doing this, coming to my job, because he didn't work there no more. He kept coming back, trying to get his job, and that, that's not, trying to get that's a job. No, no, so I'm telling happened, him to be quiet. I'm, so, I'm engrossed in your story, Mr. Monroy. So he kept engrossed. trying to come back anyway, to try to get his job. coming back harassing me. Okay, so I, so far I haven't heard him harass you. All I heard was a lot of yada yada yada. So if, unless you well, could be more specific, that's what means. No, and uh, so then that's what happened. So I took him out. He came by one day. No, and I took came him by one day. Uh, I told him I want to talk to you outside because uh, I already had notified him about bringing this kind of problems to my job. You know, what I mean, telling my boss that I smoke, whatever, and and, and whatever. You know, just causing problems. Just a second. Do you? Of course not. <laughs> Oh, I would never. Never, never. <laughs> you know? Never, never, <laughs> never Mr. Never. McRoy. Judge Judy will continue in a moment. How old are you? 21. <sighs> Better change your way, sir, if you want to live to be 22. Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. Mayolo Guerrero wants his co-worker, David Monroy, to pay the medical bills for breaking his jaw. So you asked him to step outside with you, right? Well, basically, yes. I told him to cross And what happened when you got outside? Well, we just were uh, outside and, and uh, no, no, we were walking. Check it out. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're outside, okay? We walk outside. And he's real paranoid because he already knew I was going to, you know what I mean? So he turns around and I just, you know, and I, you know, did what I do. How, I mean, how else do you want me to put it, Judge? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you hit him. Right? That's what this is all about. So you hit him. Uh -huh. Boy, I wish I could send him for a blood test right now. <sighs> Mr. Monroy. Uh -huh. When was the last time you were arrested, sir? Never been arrested, convicted. I didn't ask you whether you've ever been convicted, sir. I, I told you, you I've never been arrested or convicted. Never? 
Well, as an adult, no. <laughs> Can I see your medical bills, please? This here was the before one, and this is the after the one that my medical insurance didn't cover. <sighs> Mr. Guerrero, your medical bills that were uncovered amounted to $2,433. Is that yes, right, sir? sir? Mm hmm. They were uncovered by insurance. Yeah. Can you tell me, Mr. Guerrero, you sued for the exact amount of your unreimbursed yeah. medical bills. Could you tell me why, sir, you didn't sue him for the pain and suffering? I assume you had some pain and suffering. Uh, I'm just curious. I did. I just, I mean, to this point, I just wanted to, to, to get the medical bills out of the, out of the way. That was my main priority. I didn't really care if, if I got anything for my pain and suffering or lost wages or anything like that. I just wanted Are you to his get sister? Mm-hmm. Yes is an appropriate yes. answer. Step up here a sec. What's your name? Yolanda Guerrero. How old are you? 18. How long did you go out with Mr. Chalmer over here? Not one day. Not one day? You didn't go out with him at all? Well, I did, but it was a mistake. I asked you, how long did you go out with him? Just for about a month and a half. Did he ever use drugs in your presence? Yes, he did. What kind? It's not even relevant, though, man. What kind? Marijuana. Anything else? Not that I remember. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Judge Judy is ready to rule. All right. You say he assaulted you. I don't know what his defense All is to this. I, I don't know. When I did it, too, huh? I don't know. I don't know what his defense is. I, you know, I couldn't figure out from the answer what wasn't his defense no, there was. There wasn't no defense, you know what I'm saying? He came to my job where I work at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and we fought, so, you know, what can you expect if you're coming to, you know what I'm saying? Coming to somebody telling him, oh, you're my sister, da, da, da. You know? How old are you? 21. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Can I Better say change something? your way, sir, if you want to live to be 22. <laughs> Listen, it's not a very difficult case. The judgment in this case is for the plaintiff for the amount requested, which represents his unreimbursed medical bills, $2,433. Please take That's all. Last level. Our excuse, you may step out. Judge Judy will continue in a moment. And on the next Judge Judy. I gave him plenty of chances. I let him know, don't be coming over here, man. You know what I'm saying? I told him, I gave him plenty of chances. He kept coming, so he. Kept doing what you're doing, kept getting what you get. The guy came out of nowhere and hit me. I mean, I, he didn't even give me a chance for me to, you know, to do something about it. Is that the video? Should Judge Judy burn this video? Have you ever shown this video to anyone? No, ma'am. I would never show it to anyone else. The tape is an intimate home video, communal property in the divorce of Kelly and Christopher Peters. And you want it destroyed? Yes, I do. You want to keep it? Yes, ma'am. That's sick. You are about to enter the courtroom of Judge Judith Scheinlin. The people are real. The cases are real. The rulings are final. This is her courtroom. This is Judge Judy. Parties on Peters versus Peters. Step forward, please. 30-year-old exotic dancer Kelly Peters and her husband of six years, Christopher, are going through a divorce. They have come before Judge Judy to settle their disputes over a car, a cat, a dog, and their intimate home video. Order. All rise. Quiet in the courtroom, please. All rise. Yeah, this is case number 60 on the calendar in the matter of Peters versus Peters. Judge, the parties have been sworn in. You may be seated. Thank you. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Peters, you've been married for six years, and you're in the process of divorcing, according to your papers. I think that you've both agreed that your marriage is going to be over, despite the fact that I get some sense in these papers that you still care about each other, that your lives are going in different directions. And you come before me today because there is certain property that you have agreed to permit me t to resolve with regard to the issue of ownership. Correct? Yes, ma'am. And once those issues of property are resolved, 
then the divorce process will be a relatively easy one. Right. Yes. Yes. Take a deep breath. Are you nervous? A little. Okay. Mrs. Peters, according to your complaint, there are three items at issue. Right. There My... is an, a car. Right, the car. What kind of car is it? It's a 1993 Geostorm, GSI. And then um, my, uh, the issue of my, pet, my cat and my dog, he gave my cat away. Um, and we had decided that I would... So there's a dog? Yes. Because the cat's gone? Yes. And so, um, then also we have some videos that we... Some personal videos that he has that you would like back. Well, I or would like, like it destroyed. Yes. Let's start with the car, because my sense is that the car is in the area of emotions, the easiest thing to resolve. That's correct. Is that right? That's correct. Now, the car is in your name. Yes, ma'am. But she pays for it. That is correct. How did that come about? Because when Chris and I had moved to California together, for a while, he wasn't working, and I had paid some of his car payments, um, a cu just two of them, so that he, I was afraid he was going to leave me um, if he couldn't pay his bills and I go back to Colorado, and I didn't want him to go back, so I paid that. And then I got sick afterwards, and I got really behind on my bills, so my car got repossessed, so I ended up filing for bankruptcy. I don't believe and you paid my car payments. Yes, I did. I well, did that's really not particularly relevant, because what we're here for is for resolution not to revisit bad moments. So anyway, Does that that's sound why. right to you? Yes. So you so, had bad credit. Yes. But you needed a car. Yes, Your Honor. And you helped her. Yes, ma'am. I told her, I said, now if I sign for this car, you have to promise me that you're going to make your payments on time and you're not going to make this um, a liability to me. So you said... I'll sign for it, but promise that you'll make the make payments, payments faithfully and on time. That's correct, Your Honor. You don't mind if I help you out a little bit? No, not because a Because i got other cases to do today. Thank you. Okay. How much more time has to go on this car loan? About uh, a year and a half. And how long was the car loan? Five years? Yes. And you would agree, Mr. Peters, that she has made, even though some of the payments were late, she's made all the payments? That's correct, Your Honor. So there really isn't much of an issue about that. When you separated, you took the car. Yes. So well, the, issue... The, the issue is the collection a agents keep coming to me wanting those payments because they're always late. They I'm... are not. I'm sorry. Sorry, Your Honor, but they're not always late. Well, I got just this notice right here that she's behind two payments. I'm not I... behind two Let payments. Let me ask you this question, Mr. Peters. How would you like to resolve this fairly with regard to the car? Let me see what your suggestion is. Well, I would like to be able to sign it over in her name, but that's impossible because they won't do it because of her, her credit. Um, um, so I think that she should at least reimburse me maybe half, half of um, what the car is worth, and that way... Um, How is that going to help you? Uh, well, my car is about ready to go. How do you think it would be reasonable to resolve this issue? Because what you're really asking is you're asking him to sign the title of the car over to you, and yet he has the liability. Yes, ma'am. I've made all the payments up to now. I'm not going to stop making the payments. Well, I know that because you're driving the car. But if you do stop making the payments, that means they're going to come after him or repossess the car. I would never stop making the payments. Mm-hmm. I've already paid over $12,000 on that car, Your Honor. I'm not going to stop making the payments. Plus, I paid his car insurance until this year so that he could have car insurance because he didn't want to have That's car insurance. That's not true. Insurance. You left me with $1,500 worth of bills and... Chris, that is so not true. And Just a I second. paid the last two months of your insurance. Okay. How much is this car worth now, approximately? 7000 Is that about right? Yes, that's correct. Do you have the last statement that you received on the car? I just have one of the bill that's owed right here. Can I see it, please? Well, it says this payment, it, you are delinquent by one month. 
Actually, that will be true on the 26th. Uh -huh. But I'm going to make the payment before the 26th. Okay. Give me a minute. You still owe a lot of money on this car. About 6200 I believe. Mm -hmm. She's probably paid about 2000 in overcharges by now. No, I have not, Chris. Well, she's paid for a long time. I mean, you have had the car for, if she's had the car for four years. If she's had the car for four years. But every time she's late a payment, you're on I am they, not every time they, late a payment, Chris. Shh, don't fight with each other. You don't have Sorry. to fight with each other anymore. You're getting a divorce. The fighting <laughs> is over. <laughs> Later on Judge Judy. Have you ever shown this video to anyone? No, ma'am. And you want it destroyed? Yes, I do. You want to keep it? Yes, ma'am. That's sick. Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. 34-year-old Chris Peters is divorcing his wife, Kelly, because she won't give up her exotic dancing career. They have asked Judge Judy to arbitrate the dispute over their pets, their car, and their intimate home video. Mr. Peters. Yes. I'm going to suggest to you that for the purposes of liability and everything else, that you sign this car over to her so that the car is in her name. You, of course, always have the recourse of suing her in a small claims arena. You don't have to go through lawyers or anything else. You know she doesn't have money now. Yes, ma'am. My alternatives are to force her to sell the car satisfy your loan, and then she'd have $800 left. Because if the car is worth $7,000 and there's $6,200 left to pay on the loan, that would put her in a position of not being able to be employed, really, because she wouldn't have a way of getting back and forth to work. I assume you drive to work. Yes, I do. Now, you've been married for six years. Are you employed on a regular basis? Yes, I am, Your Honor. You have a weekly paycheck? A small one. Okay. You are not, I assume, Ms. Peters, in, the, in your divorce action seeking support from him. Is that correct? Of course not. Because you're working. Mm -hmm. So I want you to look at the long-term picture, Mr. Peters. This car is your insurance. Your insurance that when this whole divorce action is finalized, your wife is not going to ask for support from you because she's not working because she didn't have a car to get to work. Got it? Yes, ma'am. All right. So what it really means is for the next year while this car loan is being paid off, you'll have to sweat it a little bit to make sure, you know, that she's going to make the car payments. You also can feel confident that after all the money she's paid for the car, it is unlikely that she's going to allow the car to be repossessed. I'm telling you right now, if you don't make your payments, the first thing they do is come and get the car. So, Mr. Peters, you're going to sign the car over to her. That, we, that way, when your divorce is over, everything's going to be finished. That's, is that a good idea? That's fine, Your Honor. All right, good. So, that was the unemotional part of this dispute. Now, let's get to the dog. The dog's name is Breezy. Yes. Breezy is, according to your papers, a boxer. Yep. Is that a yes. picture of Breezy? No, this is a picture of my cat that he gave away without oh. my permission. Okay. I... We'll get to the cat. Okay. Yes, okay. we will. That's a picture of Breezy. Yes, ma'am. According to your papers, Ms. Peters, you had a cat and a dog. Yes. You had Mac the cat. Yes. Breezy the dog. Right. And why don't you tell me about the arrangement with the cat and the dog when you separated in November? Okay. Um, we had agreed that I would take the cat, Mac, and I would let him keep Breezy, even though I didn't really want to let him keep Breezy because she's my dog, too, and I love her, and I'm the one that took care of her, paid for her food most of the time, took her to the vet. All that stuff. You agreed that you would keep the cat and he would keep the dog. Right. And because I can't have the cat where I'm living right now, he had promised that he would keep Mackie for me until I could get my own place. And I thought that instead of taking Mac at the time and having him stay at a friend's house or having my sister keep him, it would be less traumatic for Mac if he stayed in his own house with his own yard until I could come get him. And he looked me in the eye and promised me that he would take good care of Mac. The same way she looked me in the promised. eye and promised me she'd make all her payments on time. Oh, Mr. God. Peters. I did promise and looked her in the eyes about um, the cat and then I'd keep it for her. Um, but sometimes when you get... So what happened with the cat? The cat kept urinating all over the house and on my clothes and Chris. stuff. And I finally... Shh. Coming up on Judge Judy... It was totally done just for the two of us. I've never made that kind of video with anyone ever before. And I just did it for him. 
Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. Mr. and Mrs. Christopher Peters are in the middle of a divorce, but they have come before Judge Judy to settle custody of their pets, a car, and a personal home video. Why didn't you call your wife and say, listen, I'm giving away the cat. You want the cat? Come and get it. Because I knew that the cat needed a home, a good home, and Kelly, Kelly wasn't prepared. She just left the cat. If she, if she was so concerned about Breezy and the cat, then she should have done something before she left. Okay. She shouldn't Mr. have just Peters. left it up to me. Mr. Peters, you didn't answer my question. Why didn't I Why call didn't Kelly? you at that moment pick up the... Because I was pissed off. Right. That's honest. There you go. Okay. And That's I was honest. using, and I was thinking, and it, it, I was thinking that, you know, it's, it was her fault and stuff. And I was sorry. After I gave the cat away, I tried to get the cat back because I realized how much it really meant to Kelly, you know. But at the time of the, the anger of the moment, um, okay. I hated the cat. That's, so. Just a second. That's honest, <laughs> Chris. Mr. Peters. Shh. Shh. That's honest. Okay. Well, so now. Mrs. Peters, your husband acknowledges that he got rid of the cat because the cat was soiling all over the house. But, Your Honor, it's because he didn't clean out his box. Whatever. For whatever reason. He didn't like the cat. Maybe he looked at the cat as an extension of you. Is that a possibility? Maybe. He acknowledges that he was wrong. That's a step. That's not a reason for me to say that you're entitled to the dog. And I'm sorry I, I gave away the cat. Good. Did you hear that? Yes. I am. I'm, I am sorry. Because, you know, it's like he did some... The dog has been with him. The dog has always been with him for the last nine months. The dog has been with him living in a place where the dog is accustomed to living. There's a certain routine. So if I were to say, well, you gave away the cat, and now I'm going to give her the dog, what who I'm really punishing is this dog who had very... You know, dog didn't have anything to do with getting rid of the cat. So that wouldn't be fair, would it? Mrs. Well, Peters, would that be fair to the dog? No, probably right. not. Right. You're right. It would not be fair to the dog. It's like saying if you have a child and there's a divorce, and if one parent acted badly about something, you punish that parent by saying, well, I'm going to limit your visitation with the child. <clears throat> Because that's punishing the child. It's not only punishing the party, but it's punishing the child for something that the child had no control over. This dog is used to living in a yeah. particular place. How old is the dog? Three years. So for three years, live in the same place, same home, it's got a yard, whatever. Does it? Yeah, it's got, got a yard. yard. Has a routine. She's real happy too, Your Honor. And there's really no reason for me to uproot the dog because he made a mistake. Well, yes, I did. He made a mistake. He apologized for it. It was not the right thing to do. So the dog stays with him. Chris, thank you, Your Honor. Now, the last thing that we're going to address is this video. Ms. Peters, it's your position that this was a rather intimate video that you and your husband took as husband and wife for fun, for whatever. Is that's that right? Correct. Yes, that's correct. And you want it destroyed. Yes, I do. Your position is you want to keep it. Yes, ma'am, I do. Well, I have a couple of questions to ask you, sir. Okay. Have you ever shown this video to anyone? No, ma'am, I would never show it to anyone else. Okay, so you want to keep this for yourself? It, yes, ma'am. That's and sick. Excuse Very me. sick. Judge Judy continues in a moment. But it's not as nasty or whatever you, you want to think. I mean, Your Honor, it it's too... very graphic. Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. Kelly Peters, an exotic dancer, and her husband Chris Peters are divorcing. Judge Judy is deciding what happens to their intimate home video. There is no reason that I can think of for divorced people to keep pictures, videos, photos of each other that the other party might find embarrassing. Well, there's nothing embarrassing about it. It was just, you know, I mean, it's like... I love Callie. I'm always going to love her. And it's just, it's, I mean, the, the, it's not as nasty or whatever that you want to think. I mean, Your it was Honor, it's very too... Graphic. Just a second. I don't want to hear about it. I thought I was being very... Sorry. 
I thought I was being very circumspect about it. I said that there was an intimate thing done with. I have that many us. other videos of her too. I mean, that's not in the same category. This but is what she wants. This is the one that offends you, correct? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Bell, I'm going to say this to you one more time, sir, and listen to me very carefully. When you divorce, if you're lucky, you're left with certain pleasant memories that you try not to forget. You know, had, you had good times with your wife. It just so happens that in your case, after six years, your lives have taken a different path. She doesn't want to have to worry about these photographs, these videos, falling into anybody else's hands. God forbid you're out in a car and your car is in a wreck and you are there comatose and your mother goes through your things and she says, I wonder if these are pictures of Chris when he was out skiing and your mother plays this video. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying, sir? You know, it's one of the reasons why people are always supposed to wear clean underwear all the time and keep their houses neat. You never can tell what's going to happen. There are all kinds of situations that I can mm -hmm. conceive of where even if you don't intend something to happen, this can fall into the wrong hands. Someone can burglarize your house. That's a possibility. Isn't that a possibility? I don't think they'd find the tape. They're certainly not going to find it, sir, because there isn't going to be a tape. So there's nothing Off I can say because... There is I mean, absolutely it's... nothing, sir, that you can say to me that would satisfy me that there is any logical, rational basis for you maintaining anything that might prove embarrassing to her. And if she had something that might prove embarrassing to you, I can guarantee you, sir, it would be in my possession if it was the subject of this litigation, and it would be destroyed. Do you? No, of course I don't. But, Officer Bird, you and I are going to take care of this video in the back. Okay, Mr. Well, and Mrs. Peters, listen to me. That's it's resolved. This is going to be destroyed. It's going to be destroyed within the next five minutes. Officer Bird and I are going to have fun. We're going to create a little bonfire in my chambers. Now, then you don't have to worry about it anymore, Mrs. Peters. So let us see how we resolve this case. The geo... Yes, ma'am. ...is going to be registered in your name. The dog, Breezy, sir, is yours. Thank you. The video is mine. This case is over. Thank you. Thank you. Parties are excused. You may step out. Out the back door to your right, please. And on the next Judge Judy. She's got stories that she'd come home and tell me of stuff that men did to her. Women never did stuff yes, like that when I was that. Oh, I remember a certain no. bruise that you had in a certain intimate place that oh, you yeah. showed me. Okay, Chris. yeah, but it wasn't. But don't tell me that it was just me getting like manhandled ever. Wasn't like the things that you had happened yes, to you. Yes, it was and like the things. Yes, it was. There's not a man out there that would share their wife with other men. That's the bottom line. That's not true, Chris. I shared you with plenty of other women. It was totally done just for the two of us. I've never made that kind of video with anyone ever before, and I just did it for him. I still love you. I still love you too. If you want to go to counseling, we'll maybe get back together. Yes, you can give me a hug. I do love you. Yeah, I love you too.
Hockey means save the little mall window. Như vậy là chiếc nhẫn vừa của mình đã hoàn thành xong Nếu như mọi người cảm thấy video này hay và có ích Hãy để lại cho mình một like, share và đăng ký kênh nhé Hẹn gặp lại mọi người ở những video tiếp theo